March 10th, 2022 marks the 25th anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The pilot episode aired today back in 1997. And today should be March 10th, the release of this video. If this isn't March 10th, when you see this video, then something didn't go right. I wanted to talk about Buffy of each season originally, but I kept seeing ranking videos of people ranking every single episode of their favorite TV series. So I was like, you know what? I'll do that for Buffy. I haven't seen this show. There's a lot of people that grew up watching this show and probably still to this day very much love it. I wanted to see if the show would hold up now and whether I would become a huge fan or appreciate and understand why it still has a following. So this is my ranking of all 144 Buffy the Vampire Slayer episodes. Number 144, I Robot You, Jane from season 1 episode 8. This to me is the worst episode because anytime the show has androids or robots, to me that just takes me out of this show. Wolves and vampires and moon or whatever, right? But robots is just i just can't do it it's like a demon online demon thing like early internet stuff which is funny because nowadays the internet is just kind of accessible to anyone really seeing it here being betrayed by something evil which you can argue that the internet is indeed evil but it was just kind of ridiculous and kind of funny and then all of it leading up into him being in this robot thing was dumb it was stupid and then will is the one that gets catfished by this robot demon ai thing as well which plays into her being very lonely being very weird being an outcast the only thing that was good was the end xander buffy and willow start laughing about true happiness and how that just kind of sinks into them being like oh yeah it's funny right we can't really find happiness and then they just walk off 143 beer bat from season 4 episode 5 drinking beer making you turn into caveman like was uh really dumb i was initially like okay this is gonna be another fun one-off type of episode and it really wasn't through the first initial like caveman like abilities coming in it just got old really quick and then buffy also turns into one because she got dumped by parker and then this beer that xander is serving is like infected with something i don't know i forgot all i know is drink beer you talk like a caveman you act like a caveman it was funny at first but then got old really quick and got dumb really quick season four to me is xander's worst season because they don't know what to do with them which is a big issue but also during the finale of that season they kind of have a callback to it which makes it somewhat not really like an issue but it's still an issue of he doesn't go to college he's still at sunnydale the high school is gone he doesn't have a job or he does but he gets fired every now and then he just doesn't really do anything and has no purpose in the show aside from being like the main cast from the first season 142 ted from season 2 episode 11 again another goddamn android episode this episode does have something there of like having to adjust to a new parent a new stepfather or mother but then it's revealed to be an android and it's like what a why how and then joyce fell for this as well she fell for this mandroid she wanted someone else in her life buffy didn't try to adjust to it it kind of makes joyce look a bit dumb but it is an android and it's programmed to be like the perfect man or perfect husband or couple like you had something there buffy trying to to adjust to Ted because it makes her mother happy. They could have gone that route, but instead it's like, guess what? It's an android. Or have it be creepy or kind of scary of like this stepfather being a bit of a creep or just being a complete asshole, which he is. That part I liked, but again, the whole android stuff. 141 him from season seven, episode six. This was the last season and I did not expect to have a episode just be kind of be ridiculous. This episode should have been a story episode setting up more of the first or maybe have Nathan Phelan come back, you know, like having him in the last Last four or five episodes of the last season was good but i just wanted more of him maybe have that but instead we have this where a guy named rj i think he's wearing this jacket it's from his brother or whatever it's got some spell or curse which makes every girl fall in love with him so when that scene happens of buffy looking at him being like oh my or something like that it's like no why is this happening here in the last season build up to your main villain the first or deal with spike and his chip or being missed by the first or maybe xander i don't know something else but having it be this whole love spell thing was a bit ridiculous it is a good callback to xander's love spell potion back in like season two or three i think or he asked willow to put on a spell and all the girls started going over him trying to get to him trying to kill other girls to get to him so at least there's a good callback but nothing really interesting 140 i was made to love you from season 5 episode 15 this is a warren centric episode which by the way i did not expect him to become the villain for the sixth season he just did not look like a bad guy at all whatsoever and so his past comes back to 
that haunts him and a form of a very pretty girl named April but it's also a robot and he programmed her to fall in love with him just think about him 24 7 which he does not like at all whatsoever she's like really strong I think she like crashes like the party puts Buffy through a table or someone through a goddamn table but eventually the Scooby gang and everyone including Warren gets rid of her but this gives the idea to Spike to go to Warren and create a Buffy bot because for some reason he falls in love with her this to me always felt like a fan service thing like I never cared about it just based off of what I know most of the fans really really love Spike and I do like Spike he is a very fun character but I think I preferred him as a villain that to me was when he was at his best and so turning him into this good guy and being like he's in love with Buffy crush hunter always was like okay have him around people love him but this episode does have the NTs of the body episode where Buffy goes home and sees Joyce on the couch eyes wide open not waking up 39 goodbye Iowa from season 4 episode 14 Adam the half demon half robot is finally introduced way beyond the halfway point and he just does not work as a villain because he's goofy Adam felt like this kind of like put together type of villain of we don't really have a villain for like the first half we have that teacher named uh what is it Walsh and then Adam kills her so Adam is like the main villain and then throughout the episode he's trying to find out what his purpose is he kills a little boy at this playground I think and then they add on this whole I guess brother to sibling thing where both him and Riley are related because of the program or whatever Riley isn't completely human I think he's like programmed or something by Walsh or whatever didn't really care for that and then the actual prosthetics for Adam look fine makeup team is like you know what we're kind of lazy today just leave that there but this does make Riley question his role in the initiative and in the world where it seems like he has no control over his own body and kind of starts turning on them not completely on the initiative but more like okay I don't mind being here but I think I want to go back and not be a part of this Inca Mummy Girl from season 2 episode 4. This isn't really a good Xander episode. This is the second season and last season it was all about Buffy wanting to get with Buffy but couldn't get to her and then Willow being the very awkward one just like I want you but can't really say it yet and so it seems like we're back to where we began last season where there's no progression for Xander. It seems like the writers just went back on him in love with this new girl this mummy girl whatever and still trying to get with Buffy which is like no stop that and then switches to this mummy girl which was supposed to be a boy but if he was watching this boy thing or trying to tutor him instead mummy shenanigans it takes a very pretty girl form xander takes a liking to her willow is sad because she still hasn't confessed her love for xander and then xander being xander is duped by this mummy girl they eventually get rid of her but feels like a step backwards for xander the lore and myth around this princess like a 500 year old inca princess is pretty cool just being stuck in that mummified case for like 500 years 137 prophecy girl from season 1 episode 12 this was a pretty underwhelming season finale for the first season the only thing i did not expect was buffy dying quote unquote she does die and come back that's like the only thing and then the whole theme plays when her angel and like the whole gang go to the master i think the biggest like issue i have is the master himself as the first season villain typical goofy you know i'm the big bad vamp buffy's a slayer i want to get rid of her that's really it which is fine because this first season the show is clearly still trying to find its footing of like what it wants to be and throughout the episode the master's essentially stuck like he always is in this first season and so most of them is just kind of talking and spitting out monologues of honestly bs or whatever i don't know i, I didn't really pay attention to it i just kind of zoned out when it went to the master supposedly the master but doesn't really act or seem like one and then xander takes another l he gets turned down not only buffy but willa herself xander's only asking her out because buffy turned him down she feels like the rebound girl so xander just takes a huge ass L. 136 The Pack from season 1 episode 6. I think on paper this seems like a very interesting very menacing type of episode of a pack of animals or whatever or in this case high school kids which is the funny part it's just a bunch of high school kids being angry being evil and then like beating up people killing people and then eating a goddamn principal because they're a bunch of animals and it's also caused by hyenas which they went to like the zoo and then they just looked at this hyena with green eyes and it caused it which is pretty weird and xander is also a part of this pack and so he starts insulting people kicks on willow's white pasty face he sexually assaults buffy and by the end they fix him but he lies to everyone saying that he forgot all of it the only one who knows the truth is him and giles both keeping the secret feeling remorse 
135 all the way from season 6 episode 6. Dawn doesn't want to listen, she wants to disobey. I feel like there's some episodes where it's somewhat justified as to why she doesn't want to listen to Buffy or her mom or the gang. But in this case, it's like, okay, come on, just listen to Buffy, don't go out, especially with your friend and these two boys that you just met that are totally vampires. And you know, that can be kind of annoying. Sometimes it can be justified. In this case, it wasn't really at all. And then the wedding plans, this was teased a lot throughout season 6 leading up to the wedding episode and all of it will kind of be for nothing it just felt like a waste of time especially whenever we got to that episode giles wanted to leave makes sense here good callback to season 4 finale throughout the fifth season and at the beginning of this season and here buffy relies way too much on giles which you kind of don't want because eventually he's gonna have to go away the only father figure that she has he is gonna be gone just like we can't always rely on our parents because eventually they're gonna go away at some point and then you're gonna have no one else to rely on so you have to you know rely on yourself and then willow's spells and witchery and uses are not bad at the moment during the season he uses a spell to make Terra forget about their argument it's something very small but it's also very bad especially near the last like three episodes 134 go fish from season 2 episode 20 the only thing i like is wentworth miller being in this episode leonard snart prison break aside from that the whole steroids with fish dna causing gill monsters and then by the end you see them in the water and ocean in their elements swimming looking goofy as fuck clearly someone in like a costume and then the actual effect of like the gooiness of like the monster skin or whatever it's gross weird but also awesome at the same time and then it also feels like a weird pit stop two episodes before before the two-part finale having it be the 20th episode in a really weird placement if this was you know middle of the season or even early then sure but having it be this late feels weird feels out of place so it's a really goofy episode both in good and bad ways 133 normal again from season 6 episode 17 this again feels like another weird pit stop for season 6 going inside of buffy's mind willow uses a spell to go inside of her and see some asylum mental stuff which are fine you know like the only good parts were seeing joyce again but then i guess it's also kind of a correlation to buffy's mental state at this time in the season where she's dealing with spike dawn being dawn the trio being the trio who aren't really a threat yet and so she's seeing like delusions all over her mind that was cool but having an entire episode about that within her own mind felt like they could have done something else maybe but i don't know i couldn't come up with one meanwhile you have tara and willow having their issues with each other about spell work tara not liking her and using it for kind of evil bad things willow seems very just kind of like yeah whatever it's good i'm saving people I'm saving this relationship and then the trio jonathan warren and andrew again they've never felt like a threat the only one that did was warren because in his final moments we actually get to see who he really is but the other two are like just like lackeys of like you know they're there they have nothing else they want to get rid of the scooby gang because why not someone needs to be the villain for the sixth season i would argue that it's for the best kind of that there's not really a big bad until the very end because season five was glory a god going into season six you can't have no one essentially 132 triangle from season 5 episode 11 this is a anya boyfriend centric episode apparently long ago she dated this troll or was a man she traded her life as a demon to live on forever to do dirty deeds in the end turned him into this troll who gives everyone a hard time but also don't really care about this really anya's role on the show to me always felt kind of unnatural she was always there she was a demon but they kept showing up every now and then for xander and then eventually season 5 or 6 they just made her a series regular but i don't mind anya she just at first it was more like oh i guess she's a part of the the gang now all right xander likes it. okay you know all of this flashback into like the 17th century or whatever or anya's backstory and flashbacks ties back to xander where both her and willow don't really want to hurt xander the fear of hurting him and so they just kind of let things be anya does kind of get back with xander willow backs off and then oh yeah there's like a funny bit throughout the episode the episode after riley leaves buffy and so throughout you just have buffy being all sad and whatnot all the characters make fun of the fact that she has bad luck with men angel couldn't really be of angel riley kind of felt out of nowhere in season four and then bike kind of later on but yeah her being the slayer can't really fall in love because if you do you're gonna get hurt 131 where the wild things are from season 4 episode 18 this episode is uh i don't know for some reason riley and buffy having sex but then endless sex all the goddamn time is for some reason the catalyst to ghost children showing up vines showing up in this party and then willow xander and everyone else have to stop it because of their strong endless sex it's funny but weird i guess like there's already weird stuff in this show so i don't know at least it causes chaos even those guys from the initiative 
and his friends. They start freaking out, trying to call for Riley, but he's stuck in this loop of continuous sex. And then by the end, both him and Buffy are like, yeah, we had way too much of that. We shouldn't do that for like at least a week or two. It's a weird starting point for a episode that's essentially filler of sex, essentially. 130, the Yoko Factor from season four, episode 20. This is where the group finally argue with each other and they like turn each other's backs and whatnot. This happens to every show that has an ensemble cast where there's our main lead, there's an issue with the main lead with another character, which then domino effects into the whole cast. And the way they did it spikes the cause, which is good, used by Adam, who's ridiculous, but he causes all of these frictions and whatnot, which is a cool creative way to do it. But it is still just kind of like, let's have our group break apart and have them argue because why not, you know? Don't really like that trope. It feels unnecessary, especially if an actor wants to leave. How do we do this? Betrayals, argue, but using Spike as a tool to talk to each character too melodramatic. Buffy saying that I don't need them no more and she leaves and then Riley and Spike going to Adam wanting to team with him but it's like okay sure and then also the reasonings as well which admittedly I forgot 129 as you were from season 6 episode 15. This is where Riley comes back and kind of ties loose ends with the whole team including Buffy. We also get to see where he's been. He has a new girl which is for the better. I guess he finally found that one girl that can have that emotional attachment and so while I did not care for him specifically and the Buffy stuff nor his you know new girl Sam I do like that he is happy with Sam now once he leaves he says goodbye as a final appearance because I don't think he comes back in season 7 I think I think Buffy tries to call him and then they just like say his name I think aside from that this is his last actual appearance of the show and then the whole Buffy Spike thing apparently Buffy wants Spike but is only using him again this feels like a fan thing fans really want Spike to get with Buffy because they really like Spike but doing it this way of her kissing him in that musical episode and then saying that it'll stop and it continuously getting with him because there is something wrong with her i guess in this season and so the show uses that as an excuse to be like okay we'll have them together quote unquote but not be official which all right you know but anytime it cuts to them doing their thing it's like yeah okay i don't really care 128 a new man from season 4 episode 12 ethan's back to mess with giles and changes appearance apparently giles is now to everyone else he looks like a demon only spike knows about his true identity and appearance because he's a vampire i guess that's how they explain it but it leads into fun shenanigans with spike and giles two characters that i did not expect to have them paired up and just kind of be fun as for his help they start driving throughout sunnydale they like trash some places here and there i think the initiative chases after them he tries to go to buffy for help buffy doesn't know just sees him as a demon while ethan is in the background laughing and shit because apparently again they're like together they go way back in like the dark ages giles dark past and like you kind of feel bad for giles all he wants is someone to talk to or not talk to but help him and out of everyone it's spike the worst person or like the last person he would find and ask help from buffy almost kills him she almost does but then recognizes it is giles turns back into normal giles and then ethan is either i don't know if this character dies or not ethan he just one of those characters that show up kind of don't care about but still it's a fun giles episode about trying to survive 127 the zeppo from season 3 episode 13 xander feels left out of the group in this season which is weird because i feel like this arc or this one-off would be served better in the next season where he's not in college at all he has no one this is still season 3 and so it just feels off those left out he's hanging out with a bunch of guys that are rude cruel and kind of out there buffy willow giles doing their own thing and doing something hold on never mind the group prevents an apocalypse what apocalypse well, hold on what whatever there was supposedly an apocalypse wrote down my notes i forgot about probably off screen probably xander doesn't really need the group i mean he does but by the end they even call him out being like you're kind of used to xander which he is but realizes he could you know survive on his own and not have to always rely on buffy to save him from a vampire or demon he can stand on his own without feeling left out necessarily need him all the time especially buffy who can just kill vampires left and right easily 126 primeval from season 4 episode 21 thank god the penultimate episode of season 4 was the end of adam I was so tired of this villain. He didn't work. There's this one really cool battle sequence of the initiative facing off against demons. That was a really cool like set piece and sequence. And then just within one episode, the group finally gets back together because they're like, hey, wait a minute, who's there? Spike, that little shit, you know? Which is a quick turnaround, but again, it was Spike's doing. So it's kind of justified as to why they broke up. And then one episode later, it's like, hey guys, wanna be friends again? And then Spike also flips sides again, which is kind of an issue with him being a series regular on this show. So how do you keep 
keep him around he has a chip in his head but then what happens after that is he a villain now which he's not after he leaves with drusilla he comes back every now and then he is not no villain no more by this point people love him so he can't really do that but the important thing is adam is finally gone 125 nightmares from season 1 episode 10 i'm not gonna lie i completely forgot about this episode because it's very similar to the season 4 finale we're going through each character's like personal fears and nightmares so for xander it's being naked in class cordelia it's her hair getting messy which makes sense to her character but then you also have fears like giles the fear of being the watcher and letting buffy die because of him having to watch over her but not being enough to prevent her from being dead or dying kind of like a father figure trying to protect his own daughter and then for buffy it's not only dying but also her parents divorce this is the only time that we see of or hear of buffy's dad i think maybe later on but she blames herself for them being apart being divorced which i find are the best parts of buffy whenever it's something that's relatable students being in school dealing with school things like mean girls and bullies turns out it's like a demon i think something like that something related and then by then go shopping with her father have a good time joyce and her father being apart they're never gonna get back together but that's fine she's not the issue at all sometimes things just don't work out 124 superstar from season 4 episode 17 this is a i guess kind of an homage to james bond 007 movies but also a jonathan centric episode which feels unnecessary but it's mixed in with james bond stuff so i don't really mind it as much but apparently jonathan a kid from one of their high schools wants to be a superstar wants to be well known wants everyone to acknowledge him because previously he wanted to commit suicide people recognize him ladies love him buffy and the others clearly are like you know this is wrong mess with the timeline you know i didn't even write down what caused it all i know is that jonathan's the main focus quirky but in a good way that i don't really mind it with a bunch of 007 references the one laugh i got out of this episode was the end where buffy is sleeping in next to riley and then she moans jonathan it's still the effect of jonathan put it on this spell pretty fun way to end off the episode which was the whole point just to have some fun not be taken seriously at all whatsoever which i appreciate there are you know dark moments in this show so having an episode having fun 123 killed by death from season 2 episode episode 18 another episode where it feels like it needs to fill in the runtime so let's just have an entire episode set in a hospital again and do a retrospective inside buffy's mind i think or not even her mind i think her cousin they like mentioned her cousin or something she's laying in bed in the hospital after the fight with angel everyone's there xander specifically i think this is the best between xander and cordelia's relationship she points out to xander that his loyalty to buffy is not attractive at all because it's still coming from the same place of wanting to be nice to her to eventually get with Buffy and like the fact that Cordelia pointed that out of all the characters says a lot about Xander and then you got Angel who's now known as Angelus I think it's just like evil name I'm just gonna call him Angel because it's a way more easier but he tries to come visit Xander stops him and most of it is Buffy in this episode seeing weird shit cousin being in bed while the others are waiting for her to get up just kind of wasting time wasn't really invested with the whole Buffy cousin stuff 122 touched from season 7 episode 20 Buffy leaving the house and being i guess shunned and kind of evacuated by the whole potential by the end felt unnecessary walk off be in his house essentially breaking in and this person's house sleeping in it like i don't know it just felt we need buffy out of it so that she can get like an axe from nathan fillion in the meantime we'll have the potentials and faith go in battle without you know any kind of precautions and whatnot but it also does kind of make sense because buffy's like anger kind of aggressiveness leads into some slayers getting killed so i get that but again it just feels unnecessary we need to separate them let's do it this way aggressively and to get rid of the first faith is not kind of the leader they choose her because she's uh i guess more fun and so all the slayers like you're not fun we choose faith like all right and then i guess the big part about this episode is the four intimacies we got xander and anya rekindling their love for each other which is okay the wedding was off all right we got the first i guess lesbian on-screen sex which is cool we have a one-night stand between faith and wood all right and then both buffy and spike while not being intimate in the traditional sense they just you know lie in bed cuddling each other i don't really care about this moment for moments i don't really care you know i just they were there i'm sure at the time it was a pretty big deal 121 into the woods from season 5 episode 10 this is the first time that riley leaves the show and i feel like the fans and again i did not look up any history or like the fandoms i didn't want to go into like the buffy fandom on reddit or whatever i wanted to go in the show blind as possible and so this is me assuming some stuff that most people didn't like riley and buffy together which is why it felt so like yeah he's leaving and then he didn't hear a call him he's just looking up they didn't hear her whatsoever it gave off that impression of we like you riley but the fans don't really again i could be completely wrong on this i'm like talking out of my ass right now during at the time of like season five what 2002 
one something like that someone in the comments tell me what the reception of Riley was because I don't really know I don't mind Riley it was more so oh she likes Riley all right he gets offered a job to hunt demons down this is his chance to leave throughout the season it was set up that Buffy didn't love him enough on an emotional level and so that's why he goes to these vampires brothels feeding on them on their blood that is pretty messed up let vampires bite you because why not 120 reptile boy from season 2 episode 5 this big ass cgi snake looks really bad and wonky the only thing that definitely does not hold up of this series is the cg and like most of the fighting and you know i get that this is late 90s early 2000s technology wasn't as good i completely get that but there are moments of the cg moments that are supposed to feel big and it is big you know it just doesn't look as good and so what you have here is a bunch of cult boys and this frat boy like cult thing where they get young girls to feed this big ass snake which they worship for some reason and then i guess the funny part is xander trying to be someone that he's not really and then the reptile himself shows up big cgi snake does not look good going back in the 90s late 90s and watching this show with cg you know is rough pushing the limits of like typical tv stuff of having a big cgi monster on network tv 119 the killer and me from season 7 episode 13 i kind of feel bad for amy as a character she was a rat for a long ass time and then finally got out in season 6 the last season i guess they turned her evil which i didn't want her brother was a witch and they have her be a rat for eternity essentially sucked coming back messing with some things messing with willow like i don't know i want her to be a good person allied to the team but just couldn't the reason she's even messing with willow is because willow's just kind of using magic and spells willingly without getting into any trouble or consequences which is fair on her side season 6 finale she almost destroyed the whole world because tara died and then you know she just went to england with giles a train and be lonely for a while coming back to sunnydale without any real consequences seems unfair compared to amy willow gets into the one girl what's her name they both get together i forgot her name hold up kennedy there we go her name's kennedy i think they have a kiss which then turns her into warren but for guilt she feels guilty about killing warren which you know she really shouldn't because he's a conniving little shit and then spike's chip issues this whole chip thing in his head first while it was fun seems so dragged on and dragged out finally it is removed in this last season but season five season six large chunk of season four it's like damn yo this chip it just became an inconvenience for plot and just kind of moments it's like just get rid of this thing you know he doesn't need it 118 selfless from season 7 episode 5 now this is the episode where the whole melodrama arguing felt like nah i don't really need it unlike in season 4 with spike messing with them in here it's anya she's back to her demon days because of the wedding with xander and they don't know what to do with her she's been with them for a while now been a friend buffy doesn't really want to do it but she has to xander doesn't want it and the willows in the middle being like please don't fight this is all dumb please don't xander and buffy going off at each other about their issues past Stuff. by the end it doesn't even matter because the demon or head demon comes to Anya after all her dirty deeds being like please kill me but instead of killing her he wants to punish her so she makes her mortal not a demon no more not immortal anymore Buffy stuck a sword into her chest I think her body she was fine she just walked off being like that's it damn okay you had all this power why didn't you help but it does serve as a really kind of stand out and good moment for Anya a character that's been there all the time maybe not all the time but been there since like season three or four been a part of that cast and for her to get like an actual good moment in this episode was good letting go of what she knew in the past and then trying to move on from that not knowing what to do 117 the harvest from season one episode two this is the second part of the pilot episode even though it's a separate episode this is the group's i guess official first hunt of xander and willow getting involved kind of while buffy does all the hard work jowls being the watcher just kind of watching reading books and then he's the guy angel being a creepy fuck lurking in the background watching in the shadows that to me was always creepy i mean he's a vampire but still it's like oh talk to her you know just saying alone in the dark her skipping school her hunting has real life consequences of you know the principal being like hey Hey, you're gonna get expelled so please don't skip school her mother gets honor about that no one knows except for giles xander and willow by this point and so already being in school for like i think a week or something like that like just i think a week already get in trouble maintain a normal quote-unquote normal life while being the slayer which is always the best part about her battling between trying to be normal while also hunting vampires and then at the end naive mindset that both or all the characters have xander willow and buffy being like yeah we accept hellmouth giles is looking like oh you poor sons of bitches being so super just naive not knowing what's gonna come to them during this season next season and the season after that and after that it's gonna be hell essentially 
116, the I and team from season 4, episode 13. I think this has one of the, the best moments or badass moments, or at least my favorite badass moment from Buffy, where Walsh thinks she's killed Buffy, tells Riley about this. He's all sad behind in the background in a TV where she set up for Buffy to die by these demons. It shows her being like, hey, what up? I ain't dead. It's like, damn, all right, Buffy, not taking any L's. Like that moment was like, okay, you know what? That was pretty badass from Buffy. Really cool. Then causes Walsh to die by Adam by the end, but then also causes Riley to question his role in the initiative why is he being part of this group if they're willing to kill his loved one and all that stuff so that's good for Riley. and then the other thing is spike's role on the show he had shown up every now and then in the season but then again by this point halfway through season four it's like okay what is his role aside from you know people loving him what else is there and then it just kind of became an issue of he's staying here i guess because he wanted to kill buffy at the beginning the whole sunlight stuff and then that got taken away chip inside his head and now he's like all kind of sad being like he blames buffy now for being like i have this ship inside my head i can't hurt anyone anymore role in the season has been like yeah he's just kind of sitting here being angry and whatnot blaming buffy for everything 115 crush from season 5 episode 14 this is all about spike's love troubles you got harmony comeback who is a character that i don't like why they even brought her back and turned into a vampire don't really get but okay confesses his crush to buffy which she's like ew get away and then drusilla comes back being like poor spike a fool for love it's like okay this is funny for a bit but again i do like spike as a villain and so by this point he is long long gone as a villain slightly a part of the team kind of there as fan not fan service but for fans to love and so this whole entire episode is him complaining about his troubles with girls he wants buffy why are all girls the same and what's funny is that he's been around since like 16th century or whatever like that flashback episode of him being this nerdy guy in glasses goofy as hell but particularly you know the best with women but i don't think i want an entire episode of harmony buffy drusilla in the same episode talking spike and just spike ranting essentially about all these ladies it's like ah you know don't really care and then even the whole crush on buffy comes out of nowhere at first that scene of them like kissing is like oh wait that's a daydream right and it is it's spike's dream out of the blue he's got the feels for buffy but luckily it does end off in a way that's like okay good i'm glad buffy isn't like giving in by the end doesn't allow him to come in into the house anymore and tells him to stay away both drusilla and harmony they're gone i think forever but either way spike's got some love trouble 114 hell's bells from season 6 episode 16 the wedding episode both xander and anya get married happily ever after both of their families both human and demons which is pretty funny they show up bike shows up to just taunt buffy all of this build up of mentioning the wedding hey when are we gonna tell the group when are we gonna tell them tells them and then guess what it doesn't happen because xander gets a glimpse in the future by demon or some shit about both him and anya's future they have kids but they're both miserable you know they don't seem happy happy at all whatsoever they constantly get in fights it doesn't end in a very happy way and it just seems miserable so super like late and last minute xander decides to call off the wedding he leaves anya heartbroken while the whole family wasted their time getting there they're like what the hell is going on while xander is walking out in the rain questioning marriage and whatnot and so yeah you know when i saw this episode it was like what a waste of time i guess if there's one positive is that marriage as a whole they do tackle that maybe like sometimes marriage isn't the best thing for you sometimes you get married for the the wrong reasons and be doing it because it's traditional probably not a good idea sometimes it isn't ideal for some people so i do like that part but the way they did it with all these teasing of like they're gonna get married and it doesn't end in a very happy way kind of like oh i made a mistake it's like okay all that was for nothing i guess 113 entropy from season 6 episode 18 the truth is now out xander now finds out that you know anya and spike had an impulsive intercourse while also finding out that buffy has been doing the same thing with spike for like months now i think and so it just causes this whole like awkwardness whenever they all meet xander gets even more pissed off he's even more like goddamn life sucks i don't want to get married lost anya now I find out this happens i mean i'm glad it's finally out it took like 18 episodes causing a rift between our characters not for long though which is good i'm glad this isn't like oh i'm pissed off at you for like the whole season or whatever you know it's like no this is 18 we got like four episodes left get over it and then buffy even feels even more bad and more kind of stressed out and kind of weirded out about why she's doing this why is she sleeping with spike why is she keeping secrets from her friends 112 homecoming from season 3 episode 5 the only bad thing about this episode is the actual homecoming events there's funny bits here and there of xander and willow teasing their affair looking good giles is there feeling all awkward and shit everything else with buffy and cordelia was a lot of fun getting to see them both together working together trying to defeat this vampire or demon getting to actually know that hey you know what cordelia you ain't so bad even though she's teamed up with the team for like the majority of season 1 and 2 and 3 now it's like you know what you ain't so bad you know 
know sure you may be dumb you look good and everything but you know what you ain't so bad and then after all of that whenever they get into the actual events they don't even win and so they just walk out with their dresses all dirty and whatnot because that was the whole point of this episode trying to win over each other over homecoming by the end all of it just being like oh that's useless it was a really fun episode at first i was like oh homecoming this is gonna be like drama bs stuff but no it turned out to be like a really fun episode between buffy and cordelia 111 shadow from season 5 episode 8 this is more of riley being frustrated with buffy not being emotionally attached to him i guess in a way kind of assuming even though it's kind of true kind of laying out the finale of that season of buffy not being able to love because she is a slayer she's meant to be just giving out death and then you have these like demons i think they're called like cobra demons they look kind of kind of dumb i'll be honest working under for glory i think one of them knows that dawn is the key doesn't get to glory in time and then joyce's scan i do like that throughout the season we get teased if she's gonna be fine hopefully she gets the scan gets surgery she's okay but then eventually that was all just hope and then i guess it's more teasing of like his brothel vampire days as well he like meets his vamp girl at a bar 110 real me from season 5 episode 2 this is the first on-screen presence of dawn even though she was like introduced last season during the finale i think at first i thought oh no this trope of our main character having this brother or sister that we've never seen or met before i thought this was gonna be annoying and kind of bad using that trope but somehow for some reason this show was able to be like you know what dawn is a good character and then throughout the season you grow to like her writing her goddamn diary or journal like buffy is this buffy is that eventually you're like you know what dawn isn't a bad character she is a good character that does come out of nowhere in a way and then giles decides to take over the magic box and stay for like a whole season roughly because he had thoughts about leaving buffy and everyone but nope he'll stay just for a bit longer before leaving officially and then the only thing i didn't like is a uh, harmony because again why have her in the show like she serves no purpose at all whatsoever i don't think she does anything significant aside from wanting spike being that annoying cheerleader girl or not cheerleading girl but like cordelia's annoying mean girl friends and then being a vampire is like okay she did nothing 109 intervention from season 5 episode 18 buffy gets her own inside intervention with i think the first slayer or the shaman i think either one of those two essentially explaining why she can't love her gift is death giving death to vampires and to herself so that's why she keeps having these love life troubles and whatnot turning that into a joke but then having it here being like an actual like plot device was good and so this teases her kind of demise and end by the end of the fifth finale her sacrificing herself her giving death in order to save the whole world again and then on the flip side you got the buffy bot which you know what is funny but it's like damn what the hell is going on spike's buffy bot made by warren is complete takes it out plays with it for a while the group finds out about it Spike realizes that he's made a horrible mistake decides to protect both the real buffy and dawn and then by then kiss i guess a tease to their eventual season six saying thank you but yeah the buffy bot you know funny but also dumb 108 i only have eyes for you from season two episode 19 this episode was a really cool like callback into 1955 and having that be present at school with different couples of this like love tragedy thing where i think a boy kills his girl because of shenanigans i forgot about but this correlates into buffy and angel both playing the roles of the boy and girl being relevant now because angel now is evil but there's still kind of this connection of like their love and whatnot it is a clever way of getting them together without actually being both of them and every time recreating that moment at the edge or ledge holding the gun shooting and then killing the teacher which okay now i remember it's it's like a boy having this affair with his teacher because it's wrong am i getting this mixed up with other things i think it is right and then they can't be together because of this taboo reasons and recreating that moment and then spike is revealed to be out of the wheelchair been in one since the second half and so now he's not completely free he still has to act and play the role of being in a wheelchair to angel and drusilla has his own thing and plans of getting rid of angel while also getting her back 107 empty places from season 7 episode 19 again like i said earlier for episode 20 of season 7 the reason why the slayers are turning against buffy is because they want to have some fun with fate it seems kind of superficial in a way just like this is very serious get serious and get ready for war and instead they want to have some fun which i kind of get i mean it's so kind of heavy and serious why not have some fun for a bit and then you got buffy being bloodthirsty wanted to end off the first end of this war having her head straight but also being almost too serious not enough fun and my only issue with this is that why this late this is episode 19 it's like kind of late in the season of the last season you're doing this my only issue and then to have it come back and be like oh yeah you were right faith got some people killed but you also got some people killed whatever you know
106, Dead Man's Party from Season 3, Episode 2. Buffy's come back from her one episode break in California. Yeah, California. Coming back, she feels like she's not fitting in because she feels distant from her mom and friends. While vice versa, Willow's like, well, you left. Time to kind of pay back in a way. Not verbatim saying that, but kind of in that way. Joyce throws like a party for her, but she still feels out of place. Xander's kind of pissed off by her. She kind of loses it on everyone that may or may not correlate to this mask. I think Nigerian mask that makes people do something that i forgot about and did not write down because it was so forgettable but aside from that it causes all that all of that is forgiven by the end they become close friends again they don't have this weird rift or issue with each other and then you got giles over here meeting snyder who by the way snyder is like the best character best reoccurring character of principal having these strict rules and being very set on it being this hard ass to like buffy and her friends but then giles like intimidates him the hell is giles gonna do like torture him or some shit we know that he's got this dark age past and he's looking at me like you better put buffy in school and then Snyder's like, all right, sure, I'll do it. Go talk to the mayor, teasing the mayor as a big villain. And then, oh yeah, I always keep forgetting this, but last season, she had to kill Angel. Bleeding more into this season and episode two where no one really gets what she's going through. She had to kill her own love, save the world because he was turning evil. He got his soul back by the end, but still had to kill him to close the portal. She's going through a lot of that. Having the previous finale have an effect on Buffy and others, mainly in the first three episodes is where they deal with that and then move on to the next thing. 105, the harsh light of day from season four episode episode 3 spike is invisible he gets like this item ring thing where he wouldn't be affected by sunlight but wouldn't last long gets a fight with buffy and i guess the reason why he comes here is to end off buffy even though last season he wanted drusilla and like that's it this season he comes in being like i want to kill the slayer which again it feels off it feels weird his inclusion coming into season 4 as a series regular always felt won't well, have him because people like him you know it didn't feel natural especially after episode 8 of last season meanwhile you get buffy dealing with uh, a frat boy Boy, aka parker his goal and intent was just to sleep with buffy that's it and buffy's not used to that and so by then she is heartbroken with like two other women like harmony and willow i think either way buffy and these two ladies feel lonely they feel isolated and don't know what to do for buffy it's college for harmony it's spike and then i'm assuming for willow it is oz all having issues revolving around the same thing of kind of feeling lonely kind of being like they don't know what to do 104 something blue from season 4 episode 9 again with amy gotta feel bad for her she's back for like a second in this episode as a rat willow spells stuff shenanigans it's amy and the back to a goddamn rat why do this to her no wonder she's so envy of uh, willow and hates everyone but this is kind of diving more into willow's witch powers but like with any other spell willow kind of messes up it goes kind of chaotic she makes giles blind xander is not like a demon magnet and then buffy and spike are together so any shipping or ship really like that you got it here as a tease and an even more tease next season got it essentially but they're together getting married and then buffy gonna tell riley that she's gonna get married with spike both as a joke by the amp also like it did really happen it's a fun chaotic disaster of an episode that was caused by one of our main cast and they need to fix it by the end in order to have a normal thing again because you can't have spike and buffy being married and have giles being completely blind even though he's already blind and no one wants xander as a demon magnet 103 pangs from season 4 episode 8 angel's back but with angel being angel he likes to lurk in the background in the shadows watching over buffy the only person that knows is xander everyone trusts xander he won't tell anyone whatsoever this episode served as a way to help spike escape from the initiative and kind of asks for the scooby gang to save them man, protect him having him over by thanksgiving tying him up because no one trusts him he's willing to drink and bite one of them by some point i will say though anytime there's like a themed holiday episode for buffy i don't it doesn't really stand out aside from the christmas episode in season three i think even this episode thanksgiving bike escaping being a part of the quote-unquote family because buffy's mom is out for thanksgiving which is kind of weird alone she wants everyone there so willow xander and even spike is like hey you know i'll be there because he kind of has to but aside from that it is just spike escaping angel lurking in the background xander talking about it by the end for the dinner because it's thanksgiving just have everyone over for dinner being a family quote unquote 102 teacher's pet from season one episode four so yeah this is the i guess taboo kind of hot teacher episode that i did enjoy you know kind of like with the boys in this episode we're all kind of pig-headed see something good looking hard not to look at but this hot teacher is a whole facade because it's a praying mantis i think it's like this big long like prosthetic mantis it looks scary it's also like why you know like first season has so many ideas and different variations of monster of the week that they even leave little teases amy episode in the first 
first season this episode there's like a eggs hatching that never ever gets brought back because it was just kind of an idea and probably Whedon and the writers were like we don't know if this is gonna come back or not so we'll just tease it which is fine who would even know this mantis laying eggs during season six or seven you know why even call that back when it makes no sense to call back to it mantis preys on high school boys gets them hard and then eats them lay their eggs and does it on repeat 101 listening to fear from seasons 5 episode 9 joyce is finally getting her surgery again implying more things that she's gonna be safe and all good until it's not and then uh ben this doctor guy who i did not expect to become like a big thing apparently he's like a minion of glory but he doesn't like glory ben doesn't really care he just wants to live glory under the other hands like i want to destroy the world i want this key so it creates kind of this complex situation where later on we find out that they're all but one person which i feel like i have to look at the timeline of where ben and where glory is because it should match up but since joyce is going to a hospital there's a demon that's like you know what this is the perfect time to go in and make these patients crazy causes buffy to go there and save her mom like always and is willing to accept that dawn is her daughter after finding out that she is just a key that was just made up by the monks and then both joyce and buffy just accepting her despite not being her actual like real daughter she was willing to accept her which was nice number 100 blood ties from season 5 episode 13 the one thing about this season that bugged me is the knights for some reason there's like knights because glory's a god and i don't know there just has to be knights going against demons and it just which i'm not gonna lie i'm like i don't get it why are they here for glory i'm assuming but like with androids and robots they feel out of place even though it works it just takes me out of it and this episode is also where both buffy and giles decide to tell the whole team what dawn is she's the key however with dawn being dawn and not mature enough she doesn't take it as well as the other Others. she feels like she's just kind of this vessel or kind of property that needs help which is kind of her character she's a damsel in distress and the whole team has to save her which isn't the most interesting thing but this gives moments for her and Buffy to have sibling sister bond and also no matter what whether she's a key or not they're both sisters by the end of it 99 some assembly required from season 2 episode 2 this is the homage to Frankenstein episode one thing that I do appreciate about Buffy is that they try different things it's not just vampires and werewolves that would be pretty boring and stale you got like androids and knights and frankenstein some ideas work better than others frankenstein sure i buy it you already have like vampires crawling out of graves so it would you know technically make sense that three groups of students from high school get body parts from graves and trying to fix one of their brothers you also got willa confessing her love to xander or saying it without saying it to xander and then giles decided to take a liking into miss calendar or jenny calendar teasing their thing that's going on but also the demise of her later on and then cordelia again is used as a bait damsel in distress she's the one girl that this brother frankenstein brother wants and this is the second or third time and it's like okay this is becoming an issue do something else with her without having to be the bait 98 what's my line part one this is where kendra shows up the other slayer showing that there's potentially other slayers throughout this universe they explain that when buffy died last season she became the next slayer but then buffy came back alive but here's the thing kendra herself isn't the best and i'm glad that faith kind of took that role in season three because probably the actor it may be some writing but she's not the best i don't want to shit on actors because it's hard it's not easy but she wasn't the best fit as the other slayer compare a contrast to buffy and then you got assassins showing up to go buffy howard by spike while i do like this spike being hurt and trying to find a cure for drusilla hires assassin to kill buffy who he sees as a threat was really good but also kind of weak on spike's side like he already took an l two times already and then for him to call help essentially doesn't really look good on his part but it was still cool having assassins trying to hunt down the slayer while you have kendra showing up school shenanigans with snyder angel still out there somewhere just a lot of things for buffy to do 97 bewitched bothered and bewildered from season 2 episode 16 this is the turn for Cordelia. Her and Xander being a thing. Didn't really care for it. They started kissing aggressively under this basement flood or whatever. She doesn't tell any of her friends. Because she's embarrassed hanging out with a bunch of nerds. Or even kissed one. But eventually tells Harmony and her other friends to fuck off. She wants to be with Xander. And wants to hang out with the nerds. As she and her other friends call Buffy and Xander and Willow. And then Xander's love spell that has all the girls wanting him. Willow's willing to kill other girls to get to him. Even Joyce and like I think Buffy. Oh, hold on where is Buffy I think Buffy as well fun episode just having all these girls come to him because of Cordelia he wanted revenge against her of rejecting him not willing to just be like we're a thing we're a couple so it's a fun episode just a normal Xander day with normal chaotic issues while Cordelia's like you know what I'll do whatever I want no matter what Harmony or any of the girls think
96 smashed from season 6 episode 9. Amy's finally back as a human after being a rat for all these years. Willow's like, oh, I guess I'll turn you in human. And she still thinks that it's 1999. Time has passed that. Sunnydale High School is down. Like, a lot of things happen. Catching her up. They go out. And then I guess more setup for the trio villains of the season, which again, they don't feel like villains. They feel like a joke up until Warren kills his ex is where it's like, oh, okay. Andrew and Jonathan, they're kind of there, you know? Just being like, wait, is this serious? And then Warren's like, no, I'm gonna kill all these people. It's like, damn, all right. But it's here that they have a mission, impossible mission. They get this freeze gun museum or whatever. They like freeze a guy, which looks cool. I thought it would look pretty bad, but no, it actually looks good. And then the big thing, Buffy and Spike literally smashing through walls and this building, having sex while also fighting. More of that. Don't really care about that. But it was funny just to watch me like, damn, all right. Escalated into uh, just kissing into, no, you're insane. I don't care about you to smashing through shit, you know, super hardcore stuff. 95 spiral from season 5 episode 20 this is the mostly rv episode the whole gang is in an rv spike is driving it with sunglasses and covering the sunlight and again nights they come in really weird but it does have a really standout and really cool action sequence action in this show isn't the best because buffy's a slayer and while i believe that there's only few episodes and few moments where it's like okay she's clearly the best fighter here in this moment of like the rv being chased by knights getting knights off the horses within the rv it was all done really well and then the eventual Ben and Glory merging. Turns out Ben being there, Ben going there was kind of Glory's plan was just kind of to wait until he gets to Dawn, transform, fully taking over, and then taking Dawn out of there, which puts Buffy into the static shock kind of mindset where she's not moving or talking. But the main takeaway is that RV chase sequence. It was one of the better and standout sequences of the show. 94 angel from season one episode seven we get more backstory on angel who's lurking in the background a complete mystery talking buffy watching over her and her friends turns out he's a vampire and for some reason buffy feels these certain things of like you know what he ain't too bad but he's a vampire and i gotta kill him right but no it's like the start of you know well not the start but it was teased her and angel had this thing going on right from the very start and this episode just confirms that of like she keeps thinking about him he keeps watching her over her kind of creepy but he is cursed with a human soul so he's not entirely good until season two but as of right now he's a very much a good vampire who is rebelling who likes humanity who doesn't want his side to win and then you got darla played by julie bin who by the way is like really good he's in dexter supernatural this show angel like i think she's everywhere really good at her job i always think about her episode from supernatural like she's just really good she's here manipulating working for the master but she gets staked she does die but that doesn't mean that she's not gonna come back in flashbacks 93 becoming part one from season two episode 21 we get even more angel backstory we actually get to see how he was back in the day being there with drusilla and then spike eventually coming along but then within his village getting cursed by this human soul thing and then jumping way ahead into like 1995 or 6 meeting this guy in a white suit Hold on. what's his name whistler he like invites him tells him about buffy and the slayers and he's like you know what you need to hang out with her because you could be a hero and that's the drive for angel for stalking buffy these flashbacks makes up for the present day stuff where essentially all of them taken by vampires kendra returns but then gets killed buffy they're way too late and then willow i think finds a floppy disk that miss calendar dropped in a very narrow desk area not much happens in the present day but these flashbacks makes up for what's going on in the present day 92 double meat palace from season 6 episode 12 this whole episode is essentially kind of poking fun at fast food service or like the food service industry and even retail like anyone who works at a fast food joint or at a retail all respect for you because you have to deal with so much bullshit and rude customers that i don't know how you don't just like lose your shit essentially aside from it being your job like it's just kind of insane and crazy and hard work and so buffy she needs money she needs to work so real life hits and she needs to work at this fast food joint which they think they're like selling human meats but it's only vegetable meat we get some funny bits spike comes in to order some burgers willow and xander come in as well buffy having to deal with their manager co-workers and rude customers while also funny customers as well and so again the whole episode is just like man i hate fast food i hate the food industry the only thing that was i guess bad or i had an issue with is amy again why amy you know just kind of using willow but not both using their witch stuff to do some you know bad things here and there but aside from that this is a fun episode having buffy work at fast food dealing with food service 
91 Buffy vs Dracula from Season 5 Episode 1. Interesting way to open up Season 5, having Dracula as the first bad, wanting Buffy to be his bride, was funny and good. You know, yeah, Buffy being like, nope, gonna reject you. Dracula constantly coming over and over being like, please be with me. There's a certain point where he controls her and uses her against the gang, but eventually they find out. And then at the same time, you got Willow and Tara kind of dealing with magic, upgrading it, doing more things that'll help them kill vamps on patrol. And then there is one funny bit of Giles being, I guess, not controlled but distracted by the three sisters i thought was pretty funny raleigh comes in to save the day get him a ladder giles is still shook by his experience and distraction eventually they get dracula away and then i guess this also concerns raleigh's like concern of buffy whether she really loves him or not because of dracula's control over buffy he just got raleigh kind of worried over buffy dawn's late intro at the end mom i don't like buffy or i think both of them say like mom that's how dawn's introduced as this other sister that no one knew about 90 welcome to hellmouth from season 1 episode 1 as a pilot episode it was pretty good sets up buffy who she is and what she really wants it's just a normal high school experience she's been a slayer for like a year or something but she hates it she's the new kid she hopes for just normalcy no vampire slayer stuff meet xander who already likes her already willow who's very awkward and lonely and kind of brings all of them together as friends angel being the creep that he is lurking around buffy who finds out that it's not normal you have vampires here you have the master under underground being stuck in traps so Buffy's hope for being normal is immediately gone and I think there is the pilot or next episode but I think she tells Willow and Xander or I think Xander finds out I forgot about that but either way it's very early on Giles already knows that she's like the slayer he's the watcher both Xander and Willow will find out eventually only issue with the pilot in this entire season the first season is the show clearly trying to find its footing teasing some like end credit stuff that'll never happen 89 never kill a boy on a first date from season 1 episode 5 this episode again deals with the actual real life consequences of responsibility. She wants to go on a date while you have this other little boy working for the master. And then Zhao is just constantly like, hey, you know, you should probably watch out for this. But then she's like, nah, go out with this boy named Owen. He's really excited about getting hurt or dying or something like that. It was weird. Buffy chose like the wrong guy, but he's weird. And so while you have Buffy trying to date this guy, not taking responsibility, you got vampires all over again, trying to come over at the school, trying to kill her. And so she kind of learns not quickly or right away, but eventually she needs to step up needs to take responsibility vampires will take over and her mom or even her new friends willow and xander will probably get killed even if she doesn't want to she has to because she's a slayer and kind of in a way destined to just kill 88 enemies from season 3 episode 17 faith is now in a alliance with the mayor which i always felt that it was done kind of quick by the end of the season it would work he saw her as a daughter this episode it feels like yeah you know what buffy didn't like me killing or whatever Whatever. so then it's like okay gotta go to the mayor and you know sure it works to an extent and also the mayor is super op and i think you really hurt him which i don't mind the actor playing him has enough charisma and kind of snarkiness and kind of confidence that it kind of makes up watching over sunnydale allowing demons and vampires to come over to hellmouth being the higher power i do like the whole switcheroo with angel where at first you think oh no he's turned faith and now has him on her side with the mayor but no it was just all an act all a fake tying up buffy that was part of the plan as well all to get faith in his trap Buffy almost killing her but can't because Faith is kind of her but the opposite. What could be Buffy if ruthless and aggressive but can't be quite like her. 87 bargaining part one everyone kind of knew that buffy was gonna come back so having the buffy bot as the replacement is a nice and funny moment for at least two episodes and then the new team using willow as the recon person looking over the team seeing where vamps are at and then the rest of them on the ground mainly giles and spike are killing i think it's a new team without buffy with a buffy bot the only thing that i did not like was the biker gang demon stuff they were too goofy too over the top to be kind of scary or menacing at the roadhouse drinking out a bar and then hearing about buffy bot and then also because they want to bring buffy back from the dead willow and tara and xander as well and i think dawn or maybe dawn spike and giles don't know about this they're gonna use a book in this spell to bring back buffy but they're not gonna tell them because it's wrong there might be you know future consequences which is why the next entry 86 bargaining part 2 from season 6 episode 2 the second part they finally bring buffy back but not in the typical way where she gets out she's freaked out by everything buffy bot is dead which is a good thing at first i was like okay don't bring in buffy bot they did it was kind of stupid but having her in these first two episodes as comic relief was fun i'm just glad that it was not dragged out for like the first half of this season both dawn and buffy go back to that tower where she made her sacrifice and also spike was keeping his promise of watching over dawn and protecting her kept his promise 
promise but there's also this side of like he's only doing it because he does love buffy and then buffy's still kind of shocked after being resurrected which i do like that she's not oh hey you're, you're willow hello she's in the shock of like what's going on this hell it's not an immediate like welcome back it's more so why am i here don't really want to be here 85 revelations from season 3 episode 7 the secrets out angels back buffy didn't tell giles or anyone xander's really upset by that just creates this whole argument within the whole library but they all get over it kind of a way to get them to argue but then get over it and then this lady watcher which no one should have trusted at the very beginning at all whatsoever and faith is so set on like trusting this lady which kind of makes her look kind of dumb just kind of because she did lose a watcher right before she was introduced i think and so having this other watcher come and be like i am not your watcher makes sense her trust in her makes sense but then the more and the more evidence of being like hey she's here for her own personal use and this glove and whatnot kind of gets hard not to be like okay faith you don't really know this watcher and then giles did his research a bit too late he was like maybe this lady is a uh, super suspect turns out she's not really a watcher use that as a facade and then the whole xander and willow affair this whole thing thinking back on it is really kind of dumb in the end both oz and willow get back together as a second chance while xander and cordelia are done and so having this like affair thing of the them kissing and dancing and whatnot whatever felt useless thinking back on it 84 wild at a heart from season 4 episode 6 this is oz leave for the show and i think it's because seth green wanted to leave or he was super busy with other projects so having him leave here it feels kind of fast and kind of just came out of nowhere also didn't mind it because his leave didn't feel messy it feels like oh wait hold on both him and willow have a good thing going on all of a sudden just leave all right sure because you have the initiative coming right after him whenever he turns to the werewolf at night but then also this other female wolf coming in trying to seduce him be on her side willow sees her with him around every now and then but in order to keep him safe from himself and the others as well he needs to go away i guess find himself get rid of this transformation find a cure why willow is left alone for a while until tara shows up 83 surprise from season 2 episode 13 this is where we learn of miss calendar's role within buffy where she's a part of this group or village kind of watching over angel before his curse is gone which it is because he's found happiness with buffy during their intimacy and so once it's gone jenny calendar is supposed to be there and kill angel but can't quite do that because it's complicated angel's connected to buffy and then giles and xander and willow she also likes giles and so going through with this would create a bunch of issues and then drusilla as a villain here's the thing about season two the first half is spike which is good but then keeps losing a buffy and then calls for assassins but then once she gets her powers back she's cured i'm not really a big fan of her i mean she's just vampire queen i guess she's fine as a villain 82 earshot from season 3 episode 18 this is a fun one this is where buffy hears literally everything and gives her a headache she can read minds xander's thinking about sex cordelia is thinking about what exactly she's thinking about oz is having very deep thoughts willow's thinking about leaving things out and then she hears that there's like a gun on school and so throughout the episode it's done really well of is it the students the staff one of the teachers giles one of them it turns out to be the lunch lady which first was a really disappointing reveal but then she's putting like rat poison in the food because she hates it's all of these damn kids which is you know what i don't really blame her but i forgot that jonathan was introduced in this episode i think where he's committing suicide he has the gun and buffy and the team thinks he's gonna like shoot the school or whatever but no he felt very lonely he felt that he was there by himself all alone no one really likes him whatsoever and so he's like you know what i'll just commit suicide really sad and dark for an episode that's mostly funny and so buffy's able to save a person preventing jonathan from killing himself 81 of the dark age from season 2 episode 8 finally get some backstory on giles and ethan as well turns out they both were in this group or organization with tattoos or whatever but essentially explains why giles knows so much about being the watcher the slayer why he's skilled in some certain things like why he immediately knew who buffy was why he's not really phased by vampires or werewolves because he's seen pretty much all of it with ethan and these other people does like a demon body swapping people why not this demon gets into miss calendar Kind of force him to fight while ethan just stands there and does nothing essentially being the little weasel that he is because he's kind of useless in a way i mean not completely he was with giles in that group but most of the time he is a bit useless just kind of creating shit creating chaos but i think i like more of a setup to giles backstory in episode 6 of season 2 than this episode itself 80 out of my mind from season 5 episode 4 you have both joyce and riley both people that buffy really love are in trouble because you have joyce collapsing showing symptoms of 
something that's going on and then riley because of the initiative he's got a device within him as well and so they have to fix both of that by the end riley's fixed but joyce is still kind of like okay you know maybe we should you know accept the fact that she might not make it and then at the end it teases that spike's got the feels for buffy dreams of like her coming into the crypt kissing him and it's like all right i guess the show's doing this it was a joke in season four but now it's like oh this is serious all right 79 the initiative from season 4 episode 7 we finally get to see the inside look of the initiative how it works in terms of spike being encaged and having a chip but then also having other vampires and animals and other supernatural beings in there as well for testing in this large underground building right under the school and college riley then got the feels for buffy as well in this episode and then spike can't hurt anyone else anymore because of the chip now on the one hand this is good because it leads into funny bits and funny moments throughout season 4 and 5 but then also prevents spike from being spike just to kind of have him on the show as a series regular which i got tired of by the end of like season five the chip is still inside of him and it's like okay where is this going are they really gonna have this chip inside of him for like the rest of the series in a way yes episode six or whatever they like take it out during the last season but it's a long ass time 78 out of mind out of sight from season 1 episode 11 cordelia's past and mistakes come back to haunt her in form of a invisible girl who she just treated horribly didn't acknowledge her which then makes her invisible no one can see her at all which i don't think i don't remember if they explain it through a spell or because it's the first season everyone involved don't really know the rules yet and so she just becomes invisible by not being looked at or acknowledged even at the end there's a tease of her going in class with a bunch of other invisible people in the class with FBI agents. For some reason, they have these agents going around this episode looking for this girl. Another one of those like teases that don't really come back, but it does serve as a way to have Cordelia and Buffy be closer together despite being very much mean to Buffy and Buffy being like, whatever, she's kind of useless. It creates a bond despite by the end as well, she's like, oh, get away from me, nerd girl again, going along with the pack of her friends, instead admitting that she does enjoy hanging out with Buffy, maybe Xander and even Willow. 77 same time same place from season 7 episode 3 another kind of invisible type episode both willow xander can't see willow and vice versa creates confusion on both sides but also it leaves willow a bit more lonely because she's coming back from england kind of cooling down from that season 6 finale but then only to find anya and not buffy or xander or don makes her think maybe she shouldn't have come back but nope it's all a goddamn demon for some reason he's preying on like guilt being alone and then this episode did turn into like a crime type of tv show where there's grotesque bodies throughout Sunnydale and then everyone thinks that Willow did it she's come back to create chaos kill everyone and then even by the end Buffy was like yeah I pretty much thought it was you they both say their piece about each other and then move on which is good you don't ever want it to be super melodramatic dragging out being like I hate you forever no just talk about it get through it move on from it move past that 76 end of days from season 7 episode 21 angel's back only for like a bit near the end buffy's fighting nathan fillion but i guess it's also a setup that spike and fake buffy first end where it's like that bitch which i was like no please don't do this and luckily this wasn't a thing didn't really get brought up during the last episode so i'm glad this was just you know a fake you know just create a rift last minute between spike and buffy so nathan fillion as like the fine not final boss or final villain it's still the first but just kind of using nathan fillion he is great as this like priest creepy ass priest guy or whatever like he's good he's really damn good almost to a point where i wish he would have just been the main villain used by the first or like the second half or maybe even at the very beginning and then the axe really cool looking axe kind of already forgot the name of it but it looks cool it's supposed to kill the first and nathan fillion and then all the other slayers and potentials are like hey we're sorry buffy now we're back with you because faith herself and other slayers got trapped again that whole useless like arguments her leave in her fill inside or whatever felt useless and felt like a waste of time 25 beauty and the beast from season 3 episode 4 everyone i know that oz is a wolf and at night turns into one without no control xander was supposed to watch him he didn't and he's gone from his cage and then at the same time there's like dead bodies showing up and so oz is suspected of killing these people but turns out it's not it's this like other girl feeding his boyfriend some drug or whatever or science experiment turns him into a wolf-like animal name is pete i think that part of the episode of this girl 
girl and he was really stupid and dumb. Apparently he was going after people because his girl just talked to a guy or something like that. Very jealous boyfriend but also dangerous now because he's got these animal wolf tendencies and whatnot. And then also speaking of like the wolf suit for Oz and I guess kind of this guy. Most of the time it looks bad. It doesn't look good at all. There's like some shots here and there where the wolf looks good on Oz but most of the time it looks pretty bad. Usually a guy in a costume running in the hallways. Like I think there's one sequence in this episode where it's Oz as a wolf but not shot well because it's clearly like a costume being worn by like a crew member. They just never look good. And so whenever he transformed I just preferred it to be very up close. Maybe on his eyes. That's really it. Or maybe even off screen. And the angel's back by Portal by last season. He's come back summoned for some reason. 74 phases from season 2 episode 15 this is where we actually find out where oz is a werewolf he's been transforming which is why he's been very mixed on willow where he likes her doesn't want to tell her that he's a wolf by the end willow does accept him for who he is at first she's pretty much scared at his house at like midnight and he's like transforming and then you got kane the wolf hunter who is one of those goofy aspects that kind of works he's hunting for any werewolf that he sees i do find it kind of weird that it's like near the school i mean they're in the woods but it's also in Sunnydale and then Xander's whole bit over here with this other student the whole gay stuff which is pretty funny trying to figure out who was the wolf and then he asks his student why he's always so angry and mad turns out he's gay and then now finally telling Xander about it so now he thinks that Xander too is gay and so throughout this episode and I think the entire season every now and then this guy shows up being like hey Xander it's okay I know your secret so it's just a funny bit for Xander every now and then 73 lie to me from season 2 episode 7 this is the cultist vamp wannabe people vamps buffy's old friend ford who she thinks is just being a nice person totally not using her turns out is using her knows that she's a slayer and wants him and a bunch of other people to be vampires which buffy realizes that even a guy and friend like ford you know back in la could be also trouble being a slayer isn't that easy at all despite being two seasons in knowing that she could die her friends can die her mom can die being in love with the vampire this is another one of those moments in episodes where it's not gonna be easy from here it's just gonna get harder and harder and then like four calls for a spike comes over buffy threatens spike with drusilla and then they walk off which again this is like spike's third lost 72 never leave me from season 7 episode 9 xander has another funny bit but with a window anytime the window gets crashed at the house xander fixes it but within this episode it always keeps getting crashed and destroyed so every time he has to like fix it even dawn or even and Willow Benjamin's like, hey, the window's fixed or the window needs to be fixed. He fixes it. It gets broken every time. And so after a certain point, he just puts like sheets of blankets or whatever to cover it, constantly trying to fix it with vampires or demons. And then the Watcher HQ gets blown up. Not only does the first half spike under his control, he's got vampires raising from the dead, but the first was able to manipulate and destroy the HQ of the Watchers, which means that Buffy can't go to the Watchers or ask for help because they're gone. V and Xander and everyone else, they're truly on their own against the first. And then Woods is set up to be like this super suspicious person, which he is not, but he does see the dead body of Jonathan on the symbol, just kind of looks at it, and then it cuts away, assuming that maybe he's evil. Andrew and Jonathan were there. Andrew killed him because of the first, really showing how powerful the first is. 71 no place like home from season 5 episode 5 it's here we find out dawn is indeed the key to glory's mission of destroying the world and her key or whatever and at first i thought this is bad this is not really a good thing for the point of her character but now they're making her into like a plot device but looking back on it it's not too bad because dawn does become a good character she doesn't become as annoying or doesn't want to listen she still doesn't listen later on but it's way more suitable while in the meantime you have joyce being a known as to why she's been collapsing and whatnot there's concern for joyce so now buffy's got to keep a secret and kind of deal with her mom being in trouble 70 potential from season 7 episode 12 there are other slayers out there there's other potential slayers that can be the next slayer if buffy does die giles brings them or at least a couple of them alicia day i think is also one of them which is pretty cool as a supernatural fan just kind of cool seeing her there kennedy shows up other girls that show up in the house just to fill up but that doesn't mean that they can't learn or be trained to be a slayer and so buffy has the idea including spike and everyone to help train them learn how to stake which i do like because i think the whole slayer stuff like there being other 
other slayers is good for Buffy. She doesn't have the weight of her world on her shoulder. She can just be free and not have to worry about it. But there's this one slayer thing. She kind of has to be until she dies. She does not want to die at all. Doesn't want to leave Dawn and Willow and Xander behind as well. And then Dawn feels useless in this episode. But I do love that Xander is there to talk to her and kind of turn that around and be like, you're perfect just the way you are. Be normal. You don't have to be a slayer to be a badass or to feel special. Just gotta be you. And I really like that. And it makes sense coming from Xander because he too felt useless during season 3 but find out you know what I'll just be me don't really need to be special number 69 bad eggs from season 2 episode 12 I guess this episode kind of foreshadows Buffy's role in season 5 and 6 being a mother to Dawn because Buffy Xander and Willow they have to watch over an egg be a parent to this egg and Buffy kind of sucks at it she doesn't really watch it she doesn't want to but these eggs are evil they have something in them parasites that'll get into you and will make you dig underground for something I forgot about just keep on digging and working and then you got cowboy vampires which man I don't know just felt they're both good and bad in this episode like I don't mind them but sometimes it's like the hell are y'all smoking why have cowboy vamps in this I just don't don't get it but whatever by the end they just kind of leave being scared by these eggs and parasites seeing all of these people work for these bad eggs but still a fun episode even with cowboys and eggs and whatnot and kind of foreshadows Buffy's role as a mother very later on in the series 68 this year's girl from season 4 episode 15 faith has woken up from her coma and finds out that sunnydale high is burned down the mayor is gone and just everything's changed in her world and so she's catching up but the only thing that she knows is killing buffy getting revenge on her and so she goes to college messes with buffy fights with her every now and then but switches places with buffy because why not she wants to steal her life just as she did for like a year season and a half maybe a bit more than that then causes other watchers to come over to giles they find out that faith is awake but exactly at the wrong time because now they have faith who is now buffy while faith as buffy is watching herself getting taken away and so while it feels like a detour from the whole initiative stuff i don't mind it because by this point the initiative stuff in adam was like kind of getting dumb and so having two episodes dedicated to faith didn't really mind that 67 new moon rising from season 4 episode 19 oz is back for one last time to see willow but then finds out that both her and tara angling you know just building this bond hanging out together and at first he doesn't take it too well horrible reaction but eventually getting over that he doesn't get jealous nor tries to intervene or be evil at the end he's just kind of like you know what it makes you happy clearly she's moved on and so oz needs to move on as well and i really like that they didn't need to turn him evil or have willow kill him in any way to send him off as the last episode Oz was able to take what was going on and be like you know what it makes you happy I'll just have to move on from this moments like these are really good like I will remember this episode for Oz leaving not because he became jealous that Tara's with Willow now he was able to take that move on and not be jealous over it because it makes her happy it's also you know the initiative hunting for wolves and whatnot and then he's also taking care of his wolf issues he doesn't turn into a wolf now during the night 66 helpless from season 3 episode 12 this is a very extreme test for buffy where giles takes away her player powers asked by the watchers because they want to test their limits and to see whether she is truly as good as she says but without the powers and so for the first time in the series buffy is useless physically and so seeing her freak out for the first time was actually kind of cool okay maybe not cool that's not the right word but just interesting to see whether she had what it takes to truly be a slayer without her powers but it's so extreme because she could have died from this but they don't care the watchers they don't really care clearly giles does care because he has his father daughter relationship with buffy but the watchers are like we need to protect the world is she ready don't really care pushing her beyond her limits and then this also makes her not really trust the watchers if all of a sudden they're gonna be like hey you know what we're gonna test you by pushing you you know down the water full of sharks or whatever then there's no way in hell that she would trust them at all 65 graduation day part one from season three episode 21 this is the big fight between buffy and faith which is good going to her apartment fighting there breaking through glass and then going out the window fighting outside and then Buffy still being stubborn on not wanting to kill her because she doesn't want to become like Faith and then just letting her go going to that truck be found by the mayor and then that one special moment where Oz and Willow finally happens their special moment was sex earlier in the season Oz was like they want this moment to be very special and it came here and then finally I guess the show points out the really weird thing between Buffy and Angel how it works why does a 500 year old or 300 year old vampire takes a liking into a 16 year old student it is kind of weird but not like twilight because twilight's worse but yeah i don't know i guess the heart wants whatever it wants essentially 
64 lessons from season 1 episode 1 this season opener sets up a lot of things like bringing back the high school sunnydale that was really cool it caused us both to go back think about high school but also set up woods who he is why he's here have don go to school there xander now works at construction sets up his like bit with the window stuff spike being there setting up the first of just kind of using him throughout the whole school so bringing back the school was a good callback and nice kind of touch for the final season but also used it in a way to have buffy on the inside while watching don while while also watching Spike while also dealing with the first and then oh yeah Willow is just kind of chilling out in England with Giles 63 checkpoint from season 5 episode 12 the watchers are back giving another test to Buffy the test is questioning Giles Anya Xander and Willow all surrounding Buffy as to what she's been doing how good she is and all of its you know funny scenes of like them kind of messing up but I also love that Buffy essentially puts her foot down you guys are gonna listen to me because y'all just a bunch of watchers and scared because of glory and just another one of those badass moments for Buffy once she does that the watchers are like okay yeah sure do any Thing, we won't take your powers away to that extreme level of like test but it does reveal that Lori isn't a demon or vampire she's a goddamn god she's way more powerful and Buffy can't really defeat her on her own she needs everyone's help because she's never dealt with a god before it's only been like demons or hybrids or vampires but god kind of out of her league and then Glory as a villain I think she's fine charismatic or not fun to watch and she is still fun to watch throughout the whole season but as a villain just kind of like ending the world not really good at all really like Buffy has villains that are fine most of them the only time it was good and scary was spike at first and then angel whenever he lost his soul and the first as well 62 what's my line part 2 from season 2 episode 10 more kendra stuff as being the slayer helping buffy and the others again i think she's all right don't know if it's the actor herself or just the writing spike then switches places with drusilla she's now in the main forefront kind of the main villain while spike sits back literally in a wheelchair watching her and then later on angel mingling right in front of him she then tortures angel forcing buffy kendra and the others coming to save him and then the whole xander cordilla stuff arguing kissing i think I, think I already said that but then mistaked it for another episode but i'll say it again came out of nowhere like an rko you know it just kind of happened 61 flooded from season 6 episode 4 buffy is again dealing with normal kind of issues of money issues there is a water leak in the basement and so she has to pay for the fees and doesn't really have money because dropped out of college didn't really work and her mom dealt with the whole house money stuff so now that she's gone she needs to work take care of dawn while also doing her slayer stuff as well Bound seen all of that and then another issue as well is the consequences of bringing back Buffy Giles is very much worried about this kept telling Willow why did you do this there's probably a bunch of issues with this but then Willow's like nah just she's back which is a continued issue with Willow of using magic as a way to solve problems with Tara Buffy just kind of everything and then more wedding teases from both Anya and Xander which again would be nothing and then the trio plan some stuff because they're like you know what we're nothing all three of us let's be the villains 60 forever from season 5 episode 17 this is after the death of joyce and both buffy and dawn aren't really coping with it both deal with it in different ways dawn wants to use a spell to bring back her mother which is the worst way to deal with this instead of talking with buffy about this or grieving over it dawn does not want to move on from it because she wants to rely on joyce it doesn't go too well pisses off buffy yells at buffy for not kind of talking about joyce but then leads into the scene of buffy breaking down finally kind of coping with the death of joyce because because she's essentially forced to become a mother to dawn no one's gonna take care of her xander willow anya giles they can but this is really buffy's responsibility and so it is an entire episode after the death of just dealing with it grieving over it dealing with it and then moving on from it and hopefully figure out what to do with each other because mom isn't there no more joyce isn't there 59 consequences from season 3 episode 15 faith in this episode is doubling down on more of her mistake that she doesn't see it as a mistake accidentally killing a person and it's like you know what i don't care buffy we are better than them she says that and it's like well all right don't really want to kill her this concerning and kind of eye-opening for buffy that she could be like this not caring whatsoever thinking that they're both better than anyone else buffy doesn't accept this at all and so it creates this domino effect of faith going around trying to seduce xander again but then trying to really like kill him by 
choking him out. Angel comes in to help and then by the end she's kind of a lost cause of going to the mayor for work because Mr. Trick is dead because I think the mayor killed him. Mr. Trick kind of a useless character kind of. He was there to just promote the mayor make the mayor hella strong but Faith at this point in season 3 is a lost cause and then going to the dark side. 58 scene red from season 6 episode 19. This episode at first I thought didn't seem as big as plot progression. It's only until the very end because most of it is the trio taking a huge fat L kind of going to jail or whatnot but Warren can't take that and so by the end you have Willow and Tara finally talking to each other fixing their whole thing but then Warren comes in just to ruin it all because he gets a gun tries to shoot and kill Buffy shoots Buffy but we all know she makes it but then kills Tara and uh, this drives Willow crazy and mad and turns her into kind of this dark evil chaotic witch and then you got Spike trying to sexually assault Buffy because at this point during this season playing hard to get with Spike not really understanding why she really wants Spike and this episode was the breaking point of you gotta chill out man not only does he hurt her but tries to get on with her without her consent forces Spike to reevaluate what the hell is he doing why is he even here why is he in love or has such a fascination with Buffy and so he thinks you know what I'm gonna try to go get my soul back because he doesn't know why he loves her so much it's a complete mystery to him which again always felt weird to me 57 the puppet show from season 1 episode 9 this episode is essentially Chucky there's even the whole soul transplant with the whole demon stuff within this puppet so it's their version of Chucky that's why it's kind of up this high Snyder as well he's the best the best annoying character on this show forcing Willow Buffy and Xander to be in this talent show make something up you guys are laughing way too hard and now you guys are in deal with it and then even the whole dummy stuff like it just acts on his own say some funny lines pisses off Buffy and the other characters but then this boy has to sit there and be like well it's not me it's you know the puppet no one really believes him because he sounds insane why would you blame your own puppet when you're holding the puppet but yeah I mean it's Chucky killing students for the sake of fun or probably for like a ritual but either way it's Chucky and Buffy and it's fun 56 witch from season 1 episode 3 Amy's introduction into the show her mom's an evil witch or I guess bitch and wants to live her high school glory days and so she takes over her own daughter's body to be a part of the cheerleading squad and it's also the first time in the series where Sarah Michelle has some fun doesn't really know how to portray Buffy just quite yet and so it's here that she, I think because of food or whatever very happy to which where it's a bit creepy and kind of funny but then this evil mom switches back they eventually get rid of her because if you're a parent why would you want to go back in your high school days high school suck and super messed up and use her own kid and so now amy's happy for now living with her father for like a season or two before eventually turning into a goddamn rat for another two or three seasons 55 gingerbread from season 3 episode 11 this episode funny enough reminds me of kind of mob mentality where parents are just overwhelmed by fear take that to the extreme of trying to get rid of amy who they think she's a witch which she is but not being this evil witch while also tying buffy and her mom is just like no you're evil and it's like okay this is like extreme level of protecting your kids in this town and then the show ties it back into the whole salem witch trials and then amy turns into a rat forever and ever and ever until season six or seven you know just get i feel bad for her being in caged in that small box or whatever and then willow's mom is not a good parent at all just kind of ignores her doesn't acknowledge her does kind of whatever doesn't even really care about her so this does explain kind of willow's character of being lonely being awkward feeling so alone her own mother doesn't even take an interest into her the only downside to this episode is that i forgot i actually would have preferred it if the parents knew that they were trying to kill two high school kids 54 double gang land from season 3 episode 16 more vampire willow which is good i think that other world and wish episode with cordelia seeing xander and willow be vampires was awesome so having her come here because of anya she wants more demon things and so her spell or whatever is a portal for willow other willow vamp willow to come in mess around with xander angel buffy just kind of everyone buffy almost calls her a slut and xander is just kind of shocked by everything while the real willow just kind of oblivious doing whatever and because of this willow it forces this other student perry which i think our willow was supposed to tutor doesn't care about school or grades forces them to have good grades i think by the end of this episode and later on in the finale of season three it makes him into a better student and so vamp willow coming here wasn't entirely bad it didn't make the student have good grades but it was fun while it lasted because she has to go away timeline shenanigans or something something like that she has to go back in her time and get killed 
53 when she was bad from season 2 episode 1. This has I guess like bitchy Buffy where she still feels the effects of the last season. Each finale carries over into the premiere and so she's still scared of actually dying and so because of that she just kind of does whatever. She's kind of like the bad girl you know dancing with Xander who Xander really wants Buffy at this point but with her making the first moves and dancing all around him it's off. Even Xander feels it making Angel kind of jealous wearing like a black dress and everything doing her thing until she actually admits to herself that she is just still scared being mean to her only friends in Sunnydale and Angel as well and then by the end they forgive her obviously this isn't Buffy at all the only bad thing is the boy and other vamps still trying to get back the master get that shit out of here no one wants him we want Spike coming in in the third episode 52 bad girls from season 3 episode 14 the new watcher wesley is a bit of a joke character kind of a pushover has a thing with cordelia even though she's an underage girl is there for comic relief while he got faith and buffy being the bad girls you know going to clubs dancing having a fun time until that fun is over because faith accidentally kills alan is his name alan i think and then by the end faith feels no remorse whatsoever because again she thinks she's better than everyone humans and demons and vampires maybe even the mayor who knows but she's better and then alan despite working for like the mayor he wasn't necessarily bad he was just a bystander and then faith just accidentally killed him which makes it even worse for her doubling down later on because it was just a genuine mistake 51 wreck from season 6 episode 10 this is the aftermath buffy and spike's aggressive and hard-hitting intercourse buffy is disgusted with it spike's having the time of his life but willow has become a bit of an issue to tara her magic uses are starting to become a problem just kind of brushed them off but the big thing is with dawn willow's like you know what come with me dawn they go to rack this magic guy that sells witch magic and almost gets dawn killed buffy has to find out about it willow's completely sorry about it but it's also kind of unforgivable willow knows how dangerous this is and the fact that she didn't you know just say go away dawn or just stay home brought her over dawn felt unsafe magic was kind of useful and kind of playful now it's become kind of addictive and kind of not good at all number 50 life serial from season 6 episode 5 the trio are back at it again messing with buffy this time with time and her workplace she needs money so at first she goes with xander at his workplace carrying lots of steel and wood a demon attacks and then this whole other demon tries to come and kill her takes care of it but it's not gonna work out she even tries going back to school but that doesn't work out there's one instance where she goes to Terra and then she's missing going the other way meets Terra again missed class super weird time trippy kind of like what the hell's going on type stuff and then the magic box where the same customer comes in over and over and over again she's reliving that moment over and over again kind of like Groundhog Day a time loop meanwhile you have the trio kind of having fun at first but then realizing that this is a mistake it's not fun anymore and so I think Jonathan has to put on a demon costume to like make sure that things are okay buffy at this point is at a breaking point she's lost it feels like she's in hell reliving the same day over and over again and this probably makes buffy not want to work anymore just hate working a normal nine to five 49 the weight of the world from season 5 episode 21 this penultimate episode is kind of weird a part of it is buffy within her own mind because kind of retreading the whole hospital episode this is a setup episode for the finale it's not as bad and glory gets something interesting to do her and ben are fighting for control and then there's like human emotions involved glory has never experienced before and so it feels like this is the first time that she's dealt with a struggle even though willow like blew her out with her witch powers and she lost a couple of times she is a god so having this inner conflict before the finale i do like quite a bit and then you just have dawn sitting there just kind of watching not knowing who's whose is it ben or glory and then going out but then having to turn back to glory and full control now ben he's long gone and then the whole buffy stuff inside the mind i'll be honest i forgot about she's still in shock because dawn got taken away by glory 48 choices from season 3 episode 19 making choices it's something that most if not all high school students have to think about in high school so in this episode cordelia xander willow buffy all have to think about what they want to do if they want to go to college or maybe just stay here in sunnydale and work or maybe stay with their parents or something i don't know something like that it's something that everyone does and know and thinks about what to do in the future and so while that's going on you got snyder being involved again clearly scared and intimidated by the mayor but then there's a school meeting 
despite being scared of him, he's still being very Snyder, being the principal, being like, get the hell out. It's like 8 p.m. at the school. Why are they still here? They're here because of creatures coming out, teasing the eventual end of the third season of just chaos and the mayor being this big ass snake or creature or whatever, just having a face to face right before Class of 99 fights back against him. But then going back to the choices, by the end, both Buffy and Willow are willing to go to college after graduation and after getting rid of the mayor and then Cordelia being herself, thinking about this dress, probably because she's gonna move on to Angel. 47, get it done from season 7, episode 15. You've got three shaman wanting Buffy to have a demon inside of her, just like the first layer did, which obviously Buffy doesn't want because it makes her aggressive, ruthless, and kind of not human at all. And they also forced it on the first layer, just like they're doing with Buffy, rejects it, wants to find it in her own way, and then one gives her a vision, seeing a bunch of vampires, an army of them, underground, which makes sense for the final season. They want the first and vampires to be like the central main villains, and then Buffy decides to introduce Woods to the whole team even Spike which by this point he knows killed his mom he's here for his personal revenge which is not gonna help the team 46 sleeper from season 7 episode 8 throughout the first half of season 7 we get teases of these hooded figures cloak men while Buffy are seeing these inner dreams going back all the way into the whole slayer stuff all the other girls that are potentials one of them gets a spike at the end swinging an axe to him to end off the episode leaving it as a cliffhanger which we all know he's gonna survive and then you have Spike breaking free of the first he's been seeing Buffy or fake Buffy Buffy as the first all around Sunnydale speaking to Buffy in really weird ways and having his soul back so he starts killing people having their blood on like the symbol Buffy knows this kind of gives him a pass which I guess I mean he did kill people but still at this point Buffy just kind of lets him hit on the team kind of freeing him from the first but not because the first still has plans for him and also the first is built as this like mega like big bad and so the first half you don't even know that it's a first until I think Giles name drops it or I think the watchers name drops it or maybe whenever the watchers hq blew up they said the first but it's a while until you actually hear the first or buffy and all of them know about it 45 beneath you from season 7 episode 2 as i said in the previous entry more scenes of hooded figures killing slayers and buffy seeing them in their dreams and so now it's time for school buffy's at school again not as a student but as a counselor which she is horrible at she's not really good at at all really i mean she's okay fine but still it's not the best it's clear that what's hired her for her slayer stuff not her actual counseling skills or talking to students but the main thing is that church scene between buffy and spike buffy realizing that he has his soul back but this scene is so good because of the actor James Marston or Marston Marston I think he is a mumbling and just saying a bunch of things but it's just so effective because he's good at what he's doing just kind of asking for Buffy's forgiveness while having that cross thing on his body it was a really good scene and so getting his soul back while not a bad thing it doesn't change the fact that he still likes Buffy the whole reason was to get off of this you know Buffy love thing but it's still kind of there so it didn't change much but he also doesn't try to get at her during the season 44 doomed from season Season 4 episode 11. Both Buffy and Riley finally tell each other who they are. Riley works for the initiative. Buffy is a slayer which I do find funny that he doesn't know what a slayer is. Both him and the initiative think that it's like a myth just this thing that was told whatever long long and long ago but no it's actually real. My only issue well you know what? it's not even an issue it's more so I don't care about this. She's like you know what I do like you Riley. It's like um when okay sure but he's still trying to hunt for Spike who's just hiding in plain sight. I think this is the episode where he has like a really bad American accents just hiding in plain sight cool disguise you know just being like yeah i'm not totally you know the person that got captured has the chip and whatnot whatever and spike kind of has to lay with the team befriend them because he's got a chip riley and the initiative are hunting him down and so he's just staying over at xander's messing with them trying on some new clothes you know 43 older and far away from season 6 episode 14 this is dawn's wish where she feels like no one's really acknowledging her she feels like a burden to the whole team feels a bit useless doesn't feel quite a part of it no one really tells her anything because she's still just a kid and she doesn't like that which on one hand i can get very lonely no one really talks to her i mean they do and then the demon that made the wish i think it's either anya or her demon friend i forgot which one because by the end she can't get out of the house too so it's like oh i messed up all right release Kind of an underwhelming end and it's also buffy's birthday so dawn even feels more kind of lonely feels a bit childish being like you know what screw you guys but she didn't make the wish not knowing that there's a demon outside just praying on her so she just kind of said it it just kind of happened 42 lies my parents told me from season 7 episode 17 this is the blow off episode for wood and spike where they finally come face to face tells him the truth but in doing so affects spike's chip he's kind of allowed to just fight back putting this all to an end saying that he could kill wood but it's not gonna 
gonna do it because the first is still out there so that's their main priority not this whole personal shit and then giles is like you know what we gotta kill him he's a vampire he's gonna suck on blood at some point not really trusting buffy's judgment and so buffy has to come in and be like stop this essentially join us forget this shit and move on we got the first it's way much bigger than spike yourself and your own personal stuff i did find it weird that giles didn't trust buffy's judgment i mean i guess i think he found out about her and spike like them sleeping together so maybe he thinks that's clouding her judgment i don't know it does seem kind of weird kind of but i'm glad that they just got past this just glad that it wasn't in the finale or penultimate where woods comes in and kills spike or whatever 41 living conditions from season 4 episode 2 so i did not expect her roommate kathy to be like this demon thing especially in episode 1 where she seems nice weird and quirky and awkward very kind of not obsessive but just kind of lonely and so she kind of looks at buffy and or not looks but takes a liking into her because they're roommates what well, turns out she's just been feeding on their dreams and brain or whatever because she's a goddamn demon and the funny part is buffy trying to convince willow xander giles and everyone else around her being like my roommate is crazy she is insane finding any little excuse to get back at her because she's studying and then she's like clipping her nails it's very loud very over dramatic loud noises of clicking and dropping on like the book or whatever i think she's only been with her for like a week or maybe two weeks something like that and already tired of her can't stand her whatsoever but eventually getting rid of her willow is willing to be her roommate which is a better fit not having to wake up fighting your roommates clipping her nails putting on loud music going through her clothes if there's one thing that is really annoying other people going through your shit god damn don't do that shit come on now that's just rude but buffy's still trying to fit into college she doesn't have any friends aside from willow and oz she's pretty much lonely having a hard time in class not fitting in quite well just yet not really meeting new people 40 the freshman from season one episode four going to college a new school a new set new things for buffy to do in this new school college dorms and that roommate and willow and oz are spending a lot of time together which means that buffy's pretty much alone because xander isn't there xander is still living at his parents giles is with olivia i think and so buffy's in a new element everyone's got their own thing and she can't seem to fit in one thing i didn't like though is this vampire chick rock chick or whatever buffy not being able to beat her that seems a bit ridiculous i'm not gonna lie i mean she defeated the mayor last season and i get it it's college she's in a very new territory new land and grounds but still she's been killing and slaying vampires for like three seasons what's different from this vamp 39 tough love from season 5 episode 19 buffy is now officially forced to become a parent having to watch over dawn because she quits college while also being the slayer glory feeding on tara's mind at first i didn't know what the hell this was whenever she was touching people and just kind of eating their essence or soul i didn't realize until googling she was like consuming and eating people's minds corrupting them which correlates to willow's and tara's issues with each other so willow has to stand up you know hurts glory for a bit uses some witch powers which i think is the first time or maybe not maybe i'm just like remembering wrong but it's the first time in a long time where willow's using her powers for battle and it's pretty cool and then dawn is not doing school stuff aka skipping school which let's be honest here who hasn't done that buffy is the only one there to be responsible give the talk be happy that she's living a normal life but she's really not because she's the key and so having her be normal is just not gonna work out she's surrounded by a slayer vampires demons everything about her life is not normal at all whatsoever and then glory surprises them at the end ripping off the wall 38 amends from season 3 episode 10 this is the holiday christmas episode that i do remember because it's the first first appearance wait hold on first first appearance it makes sense messing with angel because his past comes back to haunt him all of the people that he's killed miss calendar all those village people and other people as well come back to haunt him tries to go to buffy for help buffy's able to you know save him for a bit until it's christmas in sunnydale which looks nice i think it's like the warner brothers lot way back in the day of this set just adding in white snow in there this is the episode episode where Oz forgives Willow for kissing Xander and then Cordelia doesn't don't care about that but this episode is just kind of a feel-good episode despite what Angel's going through and the breakup between Xander and like forgiveness with Oz and Willow it just seems like a very wholesome episode despite not being one maybe it's the end maybe it's just me remembering like the snow coming down Angel and Buffy walking in Sunnydale town or whatever but I just remember liking it quite a bit because it was Christmas 37 lovers walk from season 3 episode 8 
Spike's back. This is when he's still trying to get with Drusilla. He comes back into Sunnydale to make like a spell or whatever. But then he's like, you know what, Willow, you do it for me because you're a witch. But also, he's here for, you know, funny stuff. Him pointing out to Buffy and an Angel, just do it already. Make out or whatever. Do it already. Happiness for Angel is just not gonna be happy at all. And so by the end, both realize that being together isn't really gonna work out. It would just lead into chaos and tragedy. Buffy can't be happy, nor can Angel as well. And then Spike realizes that, hey, you know what? Instead of looking for a spell, I just need to become more badass because that's who he was, which is funny, especially that flashback episode of Spike. He was not a badass at all whatsoever. He was pretty much a nerd with glasses and shit. Became a badass once he was bitten, but not entirely a complete badass. 36 gone from season 6 episode 11. This is Buffy's worst day ever because she's stressed out, she has to be a mother to Dawn, don't want to have sex with Spike, which is an issue to her. And then child services come by to be like, are you really the best guardian for Dawn and all that stuff? So her solution is to run away, but not by her own choice because the trio made her invisible. This just gives Buffy an opportunity to just run away, be free for a while until she realizes that she's dying and also not run away from her issues. There's one funny bit between her and Spike they're both getting it on until Xander walks in, but not knowing that it's Buffy because she's invisible. Spike's like, yeah, you know, I'm working out. 35 conversations with dead people from season 7 episode 7. This episode just shows how massive and how strong the first is talking to essentially every character all at the same time while they're all alone except for Buffy and the vampire. I don't think that's the first. I think it's just like hey I remember you from high school and let's talk and so instead of fighting at first it's more so hey how you've been how's high school all that stuff which was really nice for a change. It was like oh I guess she's not gonna kill him but she does but it was just nice having Buffy talk with the vampire about her issues and life and whatnot vice versa i don't know it was uh interesting and fun so you got willow talking to this dead cassie finds out that it's not cassie trying to prey on willow's weakness and then you got spike feeding on a woman killing people moving dead bodies into this one symbol and then you got andrew and jonathan coming back but warren dead warren coming back and talking to andrew kill jonathan over the symbol by the first and so everyone in this character is being messed around with the first for its own bidding and doing 34 grave from season 6 episode 22 this season finale was good mainly because of willow and her wanting to create chaos and destroy the whole world and becoming the final villain the only thing i didn't like is xander saying i love you a bit too much him stopping willow is good him saying i love you like a bunch of times like the first time i got it second time okay move on meanwhile you have spike completing getting his soul back while both buffy and dawn deal with i think vampires or demons underground while also at the same time having a really good sister moment reassuring that they both love each other i just wanted more evil willow because she's scary and a badass but it also wouldn't make sense from a narrative standpoint point of what makes her go evil or ticked off Terra dying 33 the wish from season 3 episode 9 this is cordelia's wish of not wanting buffy in her life you get a buffy who's kind of jaded tired of being the slayer but is willing to kill no matter what doesn't really care about anyone else sander and willow being vampires which is really cool you've got giles and the other students fighting for their life because in this world powers and the master have taken over sunnydale buffy wasn't able to stop him at the first season and so just a lot of things happen i did find it funny that this is cordelia's wish and she dies in the wish i thought she would be the one to be you know alive because it is her wish but no it's like nope you're not a slayer nor a vampire you're getting killed and all of it was because of anya which i think is her first appearance in the show i think don't remember every detail but just gonna say this is her first appearance 32 band candy from season 3 episode 6 this episode is a bit goofy but almost too goofy where it can be kind of bad but only a little bit you have all of the adults acting like kids and teens because of candy and so you have snyder who's a complete hard ass gives the team a hard ass time just to see him relax messing around dancing saying good things and nice things to buffy and so you have buffy willow and xander being the adults trying to save their asses and all because of selling candy in high school which by the way i feel like everyone knew that one kid that made a lot of money by selling candy to other kids in high school i knew this one kid who brought candy bars kit kats m ms skittles and all that shit and he made a lot of money those students are the really smart ones already making money in school 31 the prom from season 3 episode 20 this episode confirms that angel will be officially leaving the show for his own show but the prom now i wouldn't really like an episode about the prom but the one thing about this episode that makes it stand out is jonathan and the class of 1999 acknowledging buffy just saying all of the weird stuff about vampires and demons and whatnot saying that buffy has saved them without knowing that she is a slayer and, and so jonathan mentions moments like her saving him from killing himself and just saving this school and town really like that buffy was pretty much alone until angel showed up but this speech and moment thank you buffy was really nice because she has done a lot for sunnydale and so just getting a thank you by the class of 1999 was very good 
30 dead things from season 6 episode 13. Buffy starts realizing that maybe her sleeping with Spike maybe have to do something with her being resurrected or a spell or something like that. While I like all those reasoning for her acting strange or maybe a consequence of her coming back, I think it is just really because it doesn't trust them. Because aside from her not wanting to be on earth or come back from heaven and her thing with Spike, I don't think she's any different if I remember correctly. I mean, yeah, I don't think she is. I mean, she is kind of questioning like, I hate this place, money issues, being a mom again, but I don't know. It just, it's still Buffy with slight changes. And then this is the first time where I felt that the trio or specifically Warren felt like a threat or just menacing where he just straight up kills Katrina, feels no remorse for it whatsoever, and then frames Buffy for it because up to this point, they've been a joke. Never bought into them being a villain at all whatsoever. And so Warren is the only one that was like, okay, this guy can be scary behind the scenes using technology and whatnot. 29 faith hope and trick from season 3 episode 3 faith is introduced in this episode and you already love her she's a badass very confident the team already likes her but buffy's very much skeptical of being like who is this chick but then even at the end this badass act and kind of overconfidence it's kind of an act only kind of because she too's like buffy scared despite being a slayer and being very much powerful they're both not invincible and so while at first they're both the same in terms of relating to being the slayer later on in the season both being different in terms terms of willing to kill a person and having a different mindset in terms of their roles in the world. 28 first date from season 7 episode 14. I was worried whenever this episode started because Buffy is asked out on a date by Woods who by this point was set up to be super suspicious or evil or controlled by the first or he has his own agenda which he does. Like that it tied back all the way into being a slayer because his mother was a slayer so he is a child of a slayer who wants to hunt vampires and help which is why he set up the new school and everything and plans to kill the vampire that that killed his mother which that vampire is spike himself so initially what i thought was going to be a waste of a time of an episode turned out to be tying back into the whole slayer stuff and then andrew being in the house felt weird instead of killing him he's in the house relaxing chilling out being used by the first but eventually over on buffy's team and all the slayers so i'm glad that they actually used him in order to get closer to the first not kill him off or just not do anything with them having him chilling out in the house 27 fear itself from season 4 episode 4 this episode is essentially the same as the finale of season 4 but it was done better in that episode in this episode it's a moving house and a live house that preys on your fears for xander it's him being invisible to the whole team no one really acknowledges him or listens to him feeling that he's being left behind by everyone else for oz is being a wolf clearly for will it's being a witch and then we have an odd team up between anya and giles the only two that aren't in the house and so they're the saviors of this episode but anya by this point i don't think she's a series regular so having her around was like what's going on but also didn't really mind her character so i was fine with it six passion from season two episode 17 this is where angel crosses the line killing off jenny calendar because she's trying to find out about angel how to get rid of this curse but it's too late for her specifically because angel kills her has that floppy disk in between the whole narrow disk until like episode 21 where willow finds it this obviously drives giles angry tries to go after angel it doesn't really go well that scene of him going to the house seeing all like the flowers and whatnot all the candles being lit up by this point we all know that she's dead him slowly reaching there was just kind of like this is gonna suck and it did suck seeing her dead body there and then buffy is kind of forced to go after angel now but can't quite kill him because their relationship so buffy should kill angel by this point but can't do that and should be a struggle because this is something that's personal she got very close to angel only to be then be evil essentially 25 help from season 7 episode 4 this is one of the better one-offs and standout one-off episodes of Buffy because of Cassie. This girl knows that she's gonna die at some point within like a week or something or seven days. And so you have Buffy and Xander and Willow trying to help this girl out, Dawn as well. But girl Cassie's like knows that she's gonna die at some point. And so you have people trying to help this girl out. Cassie doesn't want any help at all. And so it creates an interesting issue of how do we help a person that doesn't want to be helped at all? Someone who already thinks that they're gonna die at some point, especially at her age in high school where you don't really wanna see kids die at all, but she does die at the end. Someone who has, you know, a future ahead of them just to see them die here her family had a history of like a heart disease it's not because of the whole student cult people demon whatever that is don't know what the hell that is don't care but she was right in saying that she was gonna die just didn't know how because of her family's past heart conditions so despite being a one-off it's definitely a good episode that will stand out from the others 
24 the replacement from season 5 episode 3 it's a fun episode for xander because the actor i feel like had a lot of fun shooting this episode got to play two versions of himself the good and the bad but also finally getting out of his parents house and basement actually getting a house and you know having some actual responsibility now because all of season 4 was him in that basement and so for him and anya this is a big step taking responsibility and dealing with home insurance and contracts and shit and then we get some development for anya as well where her fear of dying is real now she's not doing her demon stuff no more she's been living for quite a while now and so settling down having a family and then dying of old age really scares her and then wait i feel like i'm forgetting something hold on oh yeah that's right raleigh telling xander about buffy not really loving him that's kind of set up here as well Three, 3 bring on the night from season 7 episode 10 this is the really good speech from buffy to all the other slayers about just being really scared because the first is way much bigger than anything that they've ever faced before and so that scares her a lot but within the speech it tells them not to fear at all whatsoever they have to fight back strike first because if they don't they're just sitting ducks and so the honesty is what's great about this she's not hiding it for like a long time okay she probably was but still she's not hiding until like the very end being like yeah you know what i'm pretty much freaked out but we can't be we have to fight back at some point even though she's the only one slayer here the others are just potentials they have to find a way to fight back to family from season 5 episode 6 tara's family isn't very accepting of her throughout the whole episode her brother sister and father is just sitting there being like come with us you need to come back you're a freak and all that stuff maybe not maybe not freak maybe i just made that up but like just implying and like yeah you need to come with us you're weird you're the outcast you're the black sheep not very accepting buffy and the others are and so they just accept her and just kind of leave the family to go out because this is her new family they're willing to accept who she really is unlike her actual family her father even lied about her being a demon just to keep the females in their family scared and frightened so that they wouldn't fight back or question actions and whatnot 21 the gift from season 5 episode 22 i really could have seen this as like the series finale where buffy in order to save the world again and defeat glory and keep dawn safe buffy makes the ultimate sacrifice tying back into meeting the shaman and slayers of being like your gift is death her giving death to vampires but also herself being death and so she sacrifices herself saving everyone i actually would have really liked that for an actual ending and with it being the 100th episode as well her wanting out but having to die for it buffy right before killing this vampire says that she doesn't who she is saying that there's been a long ass time since she's just you know been vampires only vampires because new vamps don't even recognize her and so it's been quite a while since the pilot to now 20 chosen from season 7 episode 22 the final episode was pretty good it ended the series off in a way that buffy can be free and not only be like only slayer to kill every vampire or defeat all the enemies and whatnot now that responsibility and burden is now on any other slayer and i guess this isn't actually the actual like end end because there's a comic series buffy being freed anya dying xander having to live with that spike sacrifice in order to get rid of sunnydale hellmouth and the first paying back to buffy for all the things that he's done and angel does one last walk into the darkness and then there's this like big scale vampire versus the whole team battle as well it did feel rushed though because last episode fake buffy the first was like that bitch to spike and so that never came up you know just like oh all right that felt kind of fast track but aside from that this is a really good way to end off the series with buffy getting the choice to either be a slayer or live the normal life that she's always wanted since the beginning 19 who are you from season 4 episode 16 faith gets to live inside literally of buffy in her life what she goes through on a day-to-day -day basis meets the team acts differently team is suspicious but still acting like buffy sleeping with riley and so at the end she's like you know what i hate myself why am i like this how come i'm not more like buffy her life is so much better than hers because she's got friends a mom a boyfriend someone to look forward to like overall happiness for her like half of the time but still much better than faith where she had the mayor but she lost him and so pretty much alone has no one really at all she gets to look at herself and kind of hates herself hates the image of her just being this bad person being very much lonely pretty much wants somewhat of buffy's life in her and so by the end they both switch back and it leaves off with faith questioning her role in the world and in the show of like what do i do who am i hate myself what do i do now 18 afterlife from season 6 episode 3 buffy didn't want to come back at all willow and the team and everyone was really excited for her to come back even giles and spike didn't know because they're like no this has consequences but buffy herself is like she's not happy she was in heaven you know with her mother probably a bunch of other people her father and instead what happened was she was pulled out from her happy place into earth which is hell to her because she now has the responsibility now of having to fight as a slayer everyone knew that she was going to be brought back but then to have her be the one that's like 
you don't want this at all was an interesting take on bringing back a dead character and not have them be you know just back to normal and you know everything's fine because it's not she was happy and now she's really not she only tells spike keeps it a secret until the musical episode 17 innocence from season 2 episode 14 angel's curse is now gone which means that he can't find happiness nor buffy buffy for the first time in a long time was really happy with angel felt like she was on top of the world being happy with his old ass vampire but that love and happiness would turn into a curse which keeps it interesting because i didn't want this lovey dovey stuff between her and angel to take over the show and it still kind of does but they do it in a way where it's like okay now that angel's not really angel no more you gotta deal with them but in a very different way so really like that also really like the callback to Xander's Halloween costume of being a soldier, bringing that back in here. And then this is where they have that mall scene where I think Buffy has a rocket launcher and blows up that one vamp into pieces in this mall. That was super badass. But knowing that Angel's now bad, Buffy hopes that she doesn't have to kill Angel. 16 becoming part 2 from season 2 episode 22 buffy has to kill her love in order to save the world even though she doesn't want to she has to take responsibility and do the right thing because she can't have her selfish needs over the rest of the world despite being angel despite willow doing the whole spell and angels being angel again still has to close the portal and so says goodbye to him this causes buffy to run away from sunnydale but then sue finds out that running away from your issues isn't really gonna help them and then spike and drusilla they go away for a while until spike returns back for another episode and then eventually a series regular 15 school hard from season 2 episode 3 the first appearance of spike and the only time where i felt he was a menacing villain he felt like he was a badass willing to do anything to kill a slayer and then after that he just became you know part of the group part of the show but this is my favorite version of spike probably should have stayed this way honestly attacks of school during the whole parent teacher night snyder's there as well and so you get some really funny snyder stuff and then the whole stalking buffy throughout the whole school and hallways as well was done really well spike getting like a pull and then pushing it up in the ceiling was awesome even Angel couldn't trick him. Angel's using Xander as bait pretending to be bad but sees through all of that. So this is my favorite version of Spike. 14 Storyteller from Season 7 Episode 16. An Andrew kind of centric episode which I was not excited for but with him shooting it POV style in a really old camcorder like Sony camcorder. But then also baiting him into crying to close the whole symbol stuff but also somewhat redeeming him. Not completely though because he's still kind of a shithead for making Buffy invisible and hanging out with Warren and Jonathan. But he is redeemed by this point which I did not think the show was going to do or do it as well as this. Having that novelty of the whole POV camcorder while also having having screen time for a character that I didn't really care for. They don't really care for him, but he's not there in the house scheming some shit or trying to betray Buffy and them because now on their side, he was willing to admit his wrongs and end off the episode with him closing or turning off the camera. 13 fool for love from season 5 episode 7 the flashback story to spike how he became a vampire how he met angel and drusilla how he was not a badass at all whatsoever glasses reading books and shit was awkward didn't know how to talk to girls and so once he does meet drusilla turns him into a vampire he wants to go save his mother because mother's sick but in doing so turns into a monster and so in the end having to kill his own mother and they actually shown him kill the two slayers that he killed one in china i think china and then one in new york in like the 70s or 80s which would become wood's mother and then eventually tells buffy that she loves him but clearly rejects him just nope just friends oh you know what not even friends just like i know you keep away from me but then you also got buffy being really worried about joyce because she's going to hospital and so because of rejection spike wants revenge goes to her house but then just comforts her because all worried and spike clearly showing that cares for her just sitting next to her comforting her because joyce might die 12 halloween from season 2 episode 6 this episode has everything i love in it halloween love it trick-or-treating love that shit costumes really good and then to have those costumes actually be the actual characters that willow buffy and xander are wearing so xander's a soldier because he has a gun and wearing soldier clothes willow's a ghost and so she's literally invisible buffy is wearing something from the 18th century which correlates to angel and angel comes in sees buffy not being buffy not this badass timid and scared and so xander is the one that's kind of in charge and more of a badass all of it was cost by ethan who knows giles and so at the very end it's teased that giles has a very unknown or dark past so overall it's just a really fun episode of our actors being in costumes playing different characters this very early on in the show which i suspected was going to be later on because over time i'm sure they just get bored of playing the same character but this early on willing to change it up was a lot of fun 
11. Dirty Girls from Season 7, Episode 18. This is Nathan Fillion's introduction into the show, and he is great because he's a creepy-ass priest and the first uses that to its advantage. And then Faith is also back just to come talk to Spike over being actually bad and making some mistakes here and there. And it's also Buffy's like second loss to the first because they go on battle to kill Nathan Fillion, but there was casualties, some Slayers died, and so that pretty much scares most if not all of the Slayers. However, Buffy's like, no, gotta move on. On. there's gonna be some casualties and some deaths but we gotta move on and so that questions you know their loyalty to Buffy and her choices into actually being a leader because she's very gun-ho and very bloodthirsty but some of them despite seeing that they're ready some of the slayers just aren't ready for this Number 10, Tabula Rasa from Season 6, Episode 8. There are no more memories because of Willow's spell, which is an issue to Tara and now the whole group. And so you have some funny bits of, you know, Anya thinking that she's married to Giles and Giles and Spike both being British. Spike hates being British because I don't know why. Willow and Xander think they're a couple because they're lying next to each other. And so all of this is resolved by, I think, another spell. But then you also get Buffy finding out that, oh wait, I'm really strong. And like all of these funny bits. At the end, Tara does leave Willow just for a bit using spells and being a witch is starting to become an issue with willow relying too much on it and then we get the continue you know buffy spike continuing their kissing nine restless from season four episode 22 there is a lot of metaphors and symbolism in this episode so i'm not gonna get all of them it's all about their fears and future what to do in the future because sometimes you have to think about it at some point and so for willow her fear is confidence and not fitting into the world i think the whole fitting in is her looks in terms of the way that she dresses but also her being bi and being in a relationship with Tara fills in the hole of trying to fit in the world because she never quite fit in but then also because of her lack of like confidence correlates into her wearing you know these really ugly looking clothes and whatnot. For Xander it's obviously falling behind because this whole season Xander was kind of useless showed up because he's a series regular and so having him going through all these different jobs different scenarios and not knowing what to do with his life and then seeing that all of his friends are moving forward while he's falling behind was the perfect way to summarize his whole arc in season 4. Giles fear is moving on he really wants to be a father figure and watch her over buffy but he also wants to start a new life with olivia start a family live a happy normal life safe life and so that to him is like choosing to leave his own daughter or start a new family because you know it's gonna be a lot more safer than staying in sunnydale and then for buffy it's obviously being a slayer being lonely because most slayers aren't usually lonely they don't really have any friends or family and whatnot kind of has to keep it a secret if they want their family or friends to be safe and so all of this was caused by the first slayer who looks really really creepy way back in like tribal days or whatever not really human well she is human but clearly a slayer but also something in her as well but as a finale it's something different it's not like a huge battle instead it is a look inside each of our characters what they want and hopefully in the future of what they want now and in the future it's really cool like transitions like when giles comes out of the party going to that black and white spike part and then the set pieces and the switchery all that stuff all of it was really damn good number eight two to go from season six episode 21 this is more the continuation of Willow's evil streak of not going after Jonathan and Andrew. Buffy and Xander feels that she's gone overboard, way too overboard. She already killed Warren, probably stop, but she can't and won't because they need to die. And like she's unstoppable, you know? Anya tries to stop her, can't do that. Both Buffy and Xander can't do that. She kills Rack, and so now they have to protect both Andrew and Jonathan. But then the one and only Giles comes back at the end, fight off against Willow and, you know, stay his ground until eventually she like gets out and beats him. Seven villains from season six, episode 20. So Willow kills Warren in this episode, which is a shocker because Willow's such a nice character, such a wholesome character, you know? And so I just would have never expected her to actually go overboard, rip Warren's like skin off, and it's pretty goddamn brutal. And then also right before, Warren has no remorse whatsoever. He's like, you know what? That girl deserved it. And it's like, okay, this isn't his first time killing at all. And so rips his skin off, which he deserves because earlier he was at this demon bar, being overconfident, being cocky, and being like, yeah, that's right. I killed that damn slayer but it's like no you didn't she's alive and now you have a witch or a powerful witch coming after you six showtime from season seven episode 11 this is buffy bouncing back after giving that speech and being scared this is her way of proving to herself and the slayers that they can actually beat the first decapitates this like big vampire's head and so ingraining more confidence into the slayers but also herself and then gets them the full-on training of like with spike later on and using weapons and then the first being you know being the first has killed like one of the slayers that first becomes one of them tricking all of them for a second but then goes away almost tricks them into like actually betraying Buffy because I thought it was weird that they were like you know is Buffy a good leader but then no it was just the first that was just around them trying to trick them 
Number 5, Annie from Season 3, Episode 1. This is my favorite season opener because Buffy realizes that running away from Sunnydale, moving to this little town, working really hard as a waitress, making money, living in her own apartment, works out for a bit, but it isn't going to solve her issue of killing Angel, leaving Xander, Willow, and Giles to fight on their own, and even leaving her own mother just for her to be worried and be like, where's Buffy? Is she dead and whatnot? And, and so it is kind of horrible of her to just leave at the end of Season 2 and be like, goodbye, you're on your own, protect your Herself. I don't want to take any responsibility. And then Lily, who is that one girl from that vampire wannabe cultist group, really like that they even call back to that, bring her back, giving her the fake Annie name, and then actually helping her out. Just a really good callback and kind of makes the world a bit, I guess, smaller. And they actually get like a really cool fight sequence as well. One of the better ones. But running away isn't going to solve your issues. It's going to make them worse and they're not going to go away. So you have to confront them at some point. Number 4, Graduation Day, Part 2 from Season 3, Episode 22. This episode is my favorite season finale because you have the whole class of 1999 fighting back against the mayor who then turns into this big CGI like monster which admittedly is not great. This is back in the late 90s and so technology wasn't as good but still it really did take me out of it. Banders like directing, like all these people with fire arrows and whatnot, Willow's helping as well and it's like damn this is cool. The mayor is this big CG monster, damn, looks bad. But aside from that everything else i love they have now graduated from high school which means that sunnydale is now gone like literally it is not a place no more the mayor is finally gone they're saving faith so that they can use her later on and then angel leaves for good for his own show now walking in a distance and so it kind of felt like an end for the high school years of buffy because most of the episodes were at sunnydale high Number 3, Once More with Feeling from Season 6, Episode 7. This episode is great. It's a musical episode, but also trying to tell the story beats of actual Buffy was a brilliant idea. And how they actually did that is kind of amazing. Like, I already knew watching it. I was like, okay, this is like top 5, top 10 episodes. Because being able to tell a story through music, most of it at least, is fantastic. This is where Buffy's able to tell them like, hey, I'm not happy being back, but whatever. I'm here now. Through a song. Give me something to sing. That was really funny. Her going crazy and shit. And then also everyone has really good singing like i did not expect Xander and anya to sing and like they have really good voices spike solo singing in the crypto was also really good i forgot the lyrics or song felt more like a rock type of solo there and then willow and tara singing felt like a disney princess type of like song and musical and so it's got everything you want really good singing while also progressing the narrative and so yeah it's a great episode oh, then, oh yeah i guess the end to close it out both buffy and spike kiss but aside from that this is a great episode number two the body from season five episode 16 this episode hit hard it hit really damn hard for an episode that's like over 20 25 years old and it still makes you cry that's great joyce is actually dead comes out of nowhere because earlier she had a surgery doctor said that she'll be fine but she's not seeing buffy trying to help kind of being in denial at first that like you know we got her to safety that shit was fake i was like god damn it is she really not gonna make it and then seeing her walk through the house giving the phone call hearing no music essentially and then seeing everyone else's reactions to it xander being pissed off Anya being confused, Willow, Tara also being very much angry, but also very supportive, trying to over support. And then Giles has to be like kind of the adult, even though he is like having to do all the people work. And then Don actually not believing it as well, being in denial, going through loss and grief. It's something that we are gonna have to go through at some point. Someone close to you is gonna die. You have to go through that, go through loss and pain and grief. And I also really love the minor details like Xanar getting car tickets. There's still a vampire that Buffy has to kill, and like all of these little things. The world isn't gonna stop for you, and so just have to go through through this and move on from it they're gonna have to kill vampires in this universe episode of buffy is i think my favorite portrayal of loss and grief and number one, Hush from season four, episode 10. This is my favorite Buffy episode ever. Having an episode with no dialogue whatsoever, but then actually having to tell a story without the dialogue was again, another great idea because you see the whole effects of it. People are selling like some crazy ass shit about like talking and whatnot or writing books and whatnot or writing out notes. Like the social aspect of like human living and life is gone. Some people even go crazy over it because they love talking, they love socializing. They can't do that. They have to like write it down or something caused by these demons. That are floating which by the way look kind of goofy i'm not gonna lie i feel like they're on hoverboard and then looking around with no actual dialogue in the episode i guess aside from the end but then able to tell a story just through visuals alone makes this the best buffy episode 
So as a bonus, I will be ranking the seasons from my least favorite to my favorite. Number 7 is season 1. Clearly the show hasn't found its footing just yet. You have cliffhangers that'll, you know, lead to something else, but not. Except for Amy, everything else from Invisible Girl, Amy's mom, I think the puppet or something else, or the hot teacher mantis lady thing, like all of that stuff is just gone. Decent main character Buffy, who doesn't want to be a slave but has to be because she's bound to it. And then you have her quirky funny friends, Willow and Xander, Cordelia as well, why not? And then you got her watcher Giles. The characters are good, but I don't think it's quite Buffy just yet until season two. Number six, season four. Despite the change in scenery in terms of going to college with Buffy and Willow and Oz, I did like that, but it did become kind of the same thing. But instead with Riley and the initiative, which at first I thought was, you know, pretty cool, but then eventually turned into just whatever, you know, Adam, who's just a laughable villain. He is not a threat at all. First time I saw him, I thought he was hilarious. Xander seemingly doesn't know what to do in the season or the writer in the show they don't know what to do with them he just has different jobs here and there he's not going to college still living with his parents but then that turns into like an actual arc in the very last episode don't really care about riley and buffy being a thing don't care at all i think this is where both anya and spike become series regular i think but this season does have the best episode in my opinion which is the hush episode not having the ability to talk not being able to socialize number five season two season two had the villains where they felt kind of awesome and not bad for the sake of being a villain well maybe you know drusilla but spike him come in was awesome he felt like a threat he knew what he was doing but then you know took too many l's and then became in love with buffy later on angel when he loses his soul and becomes the best version of himself that was awesome and then also him falling in love and being happy turns him into a monster he can't do that because angel can never be happy turning this romantic angle into an actual plot point that's better and interesting i thought was good because i didn't want this whole you know lovey dubby between buffy and angel because i just didn't care it's like okay he's there to you know fall in love with her and the indian having to you know do the right thing and killing angel even though he came back just for a sec has to close the portal and kill him at the same time buffy sacrificing her happiness in order to save the world number four season five glory i do like her as his you know god and just kind of over the top villain but then there's also times where it's like eh, you know maybe that's a bit too much but that's also the point of her just kind of being this crazy over the top godlike character and villain the whole bin stuff was fine didn't mind that felt kind of convenient dawn at first i thought was gonna be annoying i was like oh no not this whole trope of our main character has this long lost sibling or whatever they come into play for whatever reason but you know what by the end her becoming the key and all this stuff they didn't really mind her at all like having a crush on buffy always felt like this weird fanfic thing of i don't know trying to please the fans that are watching it that want buffy and spike to get together because i don't know i guess like shipping i guess but don't really care about that and then the ending i would have really liked as a series finale where in the end buffy again has to sacrifice herself in order to save the world because she herself being a slayer gives death number three season three this is the best season out of the high school years mainly because the whole class of 1999 fought back against the hierarchy of the mayor that cg looking as big monster snake thing whatever but the idea of that and then the whole class knowing that hey you know what buffy you're the savior you've been saving us for three goddamn years three seasons we don't know how but thank you finally getting rid of the mayor faith as a character being the polar opposite to buffy Buffy was a really good contrast seeing what if she was like that what if a slayer just did not care about humanity and thought she was better than everyone else the whole willow xander affair thing that kind of became nothing honestly well i mean you know xander and cordelia broke up oz and willow were like you know what let's give this a second chance and then angel finally leaves the show in order to go to la and have his own show and do his own crime things in la number two season six having no villain essentially for 10 episodes like the first half ish is kind of of both a good and a positive one being that you don't have to worry about you know this crazy villainous thing which should on paper make the season boring but it's not really it's still a good and fun season of buffy having a deal with getting out of heaven being in hell aka earth coming back which is complete hell for her and then also having to sing throughout an entire episode that was awesome and then same thing with the trio where it felt like okay what are you doing with these characters they're a complete joke i don't buy them for a second that they are actually villains of this season until warren kills like his ex i think and it's like okay he's not a physical threat but maybe mentally and through tech he could probably mess up you know buffy and the other team and then having willow go berserk for like three episodes was awesome really wish that we would have gotten more of that but it was teasing up throughout this whole season of bringing buffy back big and tear forget about their arguments willow and using magic as a way to you know just solve issues the wedding for xander and anya didn't happen because i don't know felt like a waste of time and then buffy and spike doing their thing don't really care about 
about that. And then number one, to me the best season of Buffy is season seven, the last season. Buffy isn't with anyone else. You know, she's not kissing Spike or being with Angel. She's dealing with the first, having all the other Slayers come back. That's something that I wish would, you know, come back more during, you know, season four, five, and six. But having it for the last season was awesome. That principal guy, Woods, being a child of a Slayer and then be connected to Spike who killed his mother. That was actually done pretty well. Buffy gives that amazing speech about being scared and not knowing what to do because the first is so unknown. Nathan Fillion is great as this like first last boss type villain. And then finally, Buffy being let go of this responsibility and burden of having to save the whole world is now given to, you know, all of the potential slayers, which is good because that's what she's always wanted. A way to get out of this life, a way to be free, be normal. And she got that by the end. And that was it for Buffy, ranking all the episodes. I'm not gonna lie, halfway through I was like, should I be doing this? Because this is a lot of episodes that I have to go through, but I stuck to it. I would at least talk about each episode in a minute or so, some more than others, depending on the episode itself. So after watching and talking about Buffy, I didn't become a fanatic of the show, but I now get why it's so beloved by everyone. Buffy is someone who everyone can relate to in terms of not wanting to do something, going through pain, loss, dealing with high school, college, and then being a alone and then having friends the normal everyday things that i think are the best parts about buffy she wanted to be normal and she got to deal with normal things throughout the series so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching